Welcome to uh, beautiful and green Luxembourg for the first stage in the Festival Elsie Jacobs, the Ceratisid Festival Elsie Jacobs. A three-day stage race here in the UCI Pro Series uh, ranking, which is the ranking just below the World Tour. It's a uh, race where you can get a lot of points and most importantly, it's a stage race and that is what the Peloton needs. It's actually only the second one we have had this year after the Healthy Aging Tour. We started with a prologue in um, on Friday night, a very exciting uh, short course, 2.2 kilometers. And today, the longest stage ever in the Tour of Luxembourg, 125.1 kilometers. We have a big loop of 44.7 and then local laps of 20.1 kilometers, including a very hard climb and um, a place where you can actually attack uh, to the finish line with 3k to go. So three, uh, two difficult climbs on the local lap, but the first part of the lap is actually quite manageable and flattish, as flat as you can get here in Luxembourg, because as you can see, the country is comparable to the Ardennes with uh, short, steep climbs and also rolling terrain and absolutely beautiful landscapes with uh, rivers and green, luscious forests because, well, it also rains a lot here. But thankfully, this year, the weather predictions are looking good because last year, and of course, Owen and I will discuss that later. Two years ago, of course, last year, we didn't have a race. Uh, it was horrible, horrible weather for this stage here in Steinfurt. But first, we're going to look at uh, yesterday's race, the prologue in Cessange. Very short, punchy effort, 2.2 kilometers, and basically going uphill from the start with percentages up to 13%. This is uh, Harvey. Oh, that was Harvey. This is Harris, and uh, we're gonna follow her on the bike path. And it was a very difficult prologue where you actually could not recover for one second. Time there by Harvey. But we had a uh, fast time at that moment by Lea Kirchmann, the Canadian national champion of Team DSM, clocked a time of a three minutes and 15 seconds. And um, well, some riders had trouble with that time, but not her teammate uh, Lorena Bibas, because she was uh, absolutely flying on the course, attacking this finish line as if it were a bunch sprint, and she wrote three seconds faster than Lea Kirchmann, meaning that it was a 1-2 at that point for uh, Team DSM. But of course, uh, Christine Majerus, the Luxembourg national champion, was uh, still out on the course, as was Corin Rivera on a road bike, no less, attacking this climb. This is the climb that I was talking about. And of course, she is super strong and super fast, uh, Corin Rivera for Team DSM. The team as a whole performed uh, fantastically. So currently, Lorena Vibus in the hot seat with Lea Kirchmann in second place and Caroline Swinkels in third. Great time by uh, Corin Rivera okay. on the road bike, losing only 10 seconds to her teammate Lorena Vibus. And then it's up to uh, Christine Majerus, the penultimate rider, to start in Cézanne, attacking that climb, the Rue de Tuviste, with her explosive cyclocross skills, of course. And yeah, she wants a good start of this race, uh, hoping that on the way she can get bonus seconds to win this race again. She's tried many years. She's actually been part of the race every year since the start. Uh, she's only won it once then. Well, this is of course an important part of her calendar, but she's not gonna beat uh, Lorena Vibus six seconds slower than Vibus. And some other images then of our stage winner. She had targeted this race. Of course, she already won before this year in Schelderprijs in a bunch sprint. But of course, in such a short prologue, 2.2 kilometers, you can see the sprinters do really well in that uh, really short and explosive effort. Three minutes and 12 seconds, the winning time. And that means that uh, Lorena Vibes wears the Ceratisid yellow jersey. The green jersey sponsored by Farai is worn by Lea Kirchmann. The polka dot jersey by Imo Losch by Caroline Swinkels, who was third. 
in the time trial and the GC. And the best young rider is actually Lorena Vibus. But uh, that jersey, that white jersey sponsored by the city of Luxembourg is worn by Lonneke Unica. These are the results of the first day. The differences are not that big. We have 10, 6 and 4 seconds on offer on the finish line today for the first three finishes. And this is also a very selective course, but more about that later. Riders have started, well, an hour ago here in Steinfurt. It's about 13 degrees Celsius. Luckily, no rain, hardly any wind. And, um, well, even a little bit of sunshine here. Welcome to the Festival Elsie Jacobs. My name is Jose Bain and with me is Owen Rogers. And Owen, what happened so far? Well, we've had a fairly aggressive start. The, um, it was very sunny and very warm when the peloton decided to roll out. Um, as you can see, all the riders, all the um, warm weather gear that we might have seen two years ago is gone. And the peloton rolled out as one at spot on um, 2.30. Good spirits there. In the white jersey is Lonakan Unakan, who is wearing the Young Rider classification jersey. <laughs> Next to Christine Majerus. And the green jersey is, um, is uh, Leah Kirschman, who I spoke to before the race. We've had two um, classified climbs so far. You can see there, Katrin Hammers just went for it, but had some sort of gear issue, mechanical issue. And it was Danny Christmas who crossed the line first on the first classified climb at Geishel. With Hamas hanging on for second and Julia van Bockhoven from Park Hotel Valkenburg taking the third place on that opening classified climb. On the second classified climb at Dondelange, it was uh, De Jong there who's uh, crossed the line first with Hamas in second and Danny Christmas in third. Now that will give um, Hamas the overall lead because um, she's finished twice, two times, t uh, three points for each of those. On the climbs you get five, three and one point. But now we have a breakaway. Yeah, two riders in the breakaway with uh, Talita de Jong in the blue of the Bingle Casino Chevalmera team and Katrin Hamas of the uh, Sierra Tessit WNT team, a team that has uh, important um, objectives in this race. Of course, they won it two years ago with Lisa Brennauer and Sierra Tessit is a company with a, uh, well, quite a big factory here in Luxembourg and also the lead sponsor of the race. So the team management, Dirk Baldinger, expects his riders to race aggressively. And from that uh, climb that you just mentioned, Owen, these two riders attacked, Katrin Hammers and Talita de Jong. And they have a nice uh, little gap of just over a minute with uh, 81.7 kilometers to go. Meaning, oh, that is a huge oh. crash just happening there with many riders on the deck. A lot of bikes tangled there. Uh, Danny Christmas being one of the riders there. Also, Marjolein van het Geloof, the rider from uh, the uh, from Slovakia, Medvedova, the uh, Got, national uh, champion there. Ruth Winder there, just putting her chain back on in the US champions jersey. Also on the floor for um, Jumbo Visma is uh, Julie van der Velde. And look what happened there. Yeah, a little touch of wheels, yeah. and then everybody tumbles. Also, Lorena Vibus is down. Lorena Vibus is yep. down. It, was she the woman that went straight over her handlebars? That may not be good for later on in the race if she's yep. expecting to sprint for victory here. I don't want to ask for a replay of the race, but I think you, uh, of the crash, but I think you might be right. Still there with uh, problems is the rider from the Andy Schleck team, and that is uh, Riley McMullen, a rider from New Zealand. Needs a new bike there. She's a little bit... Um, Shaky, Medvedova needs a new bike as well. And Slovakian it, uh, national champion. It looks like uh, Vibis has got straight back on her bike and gone. We'll see as the as the camera passes up here to the back of the peloton. But that was nasty if it was, was her that went straight over the bars. This is uh, going into the finish line. Uh, we are approaching the finish line now, which means um, that you have a pretty steep climb and then go into a really fast downhill and that is where that crash happened with 2k to go. These riders are on their way to the finish line. This is the finish, and Owen, it's steeper than you think. Yeah, I went for a little walk this morning. You'll see some uh, uh, photographs on my Twitter feed, at Owen Rogers, if you're interested. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's technical into the town itself. And then there's a long, sleeping, sweeping right-hander. It could be a sleeping right, uh, right-hander. <laughs> I, hope that, uh, I hope not. <laughs> a sweeping right-hander. And then just at about 500 metres to go, it kicks up. And then by 400 metres to go, we're, we're, we're talking between 6 and 8% gradient. Just for about 250 metres. I rode it this morning on my bike, and my bike computer indicated 8%. Um, so that is quite a long sprint. So you have to time it really well. And the queen of this finish is actually Christina Jerus. Yep. She's won it twice. She's won. She's won here twice. In in the, certainly in 2017 when she won the general classification. She won it then. Nope. She's shaking her head. She doesn't need any refreshments, Katrin Hammers. Of course, she will not be shaking her head at Talita de Jong because at this phase of the race you cannot say well I'm not taking over and um, that is that Talita de Jong um, of course a very long history of injury um, she was the world champion in cyclocross and then uh, had a crash actually in Hogerheide which was the beginning of many years of problems problems with her back problems with her legs and um, well I really applaud her for being so incredibly strong mentally that she managed to keep on going and keep on giving uh, her everything to come back to this level we have seen her Owen already this spring and um, she already gave up, well, a really good impression. Yeah, she's been very aggressive and it's been really good to see. Her last win was actually the final stage of the 2016 Giro in, um, on, the clay, on the banks of uh, Lago di Maggiore. Oh, um, and I was there, it was a beautiful day and she escaped solo and, um, and took the stage win. And um, That was probably still the Rabobank live days, was it? It was the Rabobank live days and Megan Garnier uh, won the GC that day, and I remember her, mm -hmm. uh, Megan, that is, eating ice cream. She yeah. couldn't get enough ice cream as soon as she finished, which was very funny. But um, yeah, on the stage that day, uh, Rihanna Marcus, another rider who is here today, won the sprint for second place. We have a little correction on the uh, GPN that we had, um, and that makes more sense. Uh, of course, we would have loved Lizzie Bennett to take that GPN, but the jury has corrected into 161 yeah. being this uh, woman, uh, Talita the Young. And the other correction we have there, of course, is that it is in fact Danny Christmas who is leading the classification overall because she's um, she won the first one. She's on six points, having come a third in the second. But because she's won one, she is currently in the lead of the classification. Well, we have two more to go, and that is on the local lap. Um, I've done it this morning. Um, it was actually pretty cold. Uh, <laughs> the sun had really some trouble. It was a little bit misty. But um, like mostly here in, uh, in Luxembourg, the roads are really wide, um, really smooth as well. But we have one point down on, um, on the course where there is a construction site where the road is very narrow and uh, the riders really have to navigate that, but that's still about 15 kilometers out from the finish line, so you have room to navigate that. This is uh, the first part, this is all flat um, until we go through that little village that I mentioned with the construction site, and then the road gradually kicks up to uh, Simulfaden. Um, the climb is indicated as being 4.5% average, but that's not really true. Uh, the first part until uh, the uh, the roundabout is about 2%. But then, after the roundabout, going into the forest, it's uh, 8, 9, 10, and topping at 11%, just below the GPN, just below the top. Um, there's points on offer the first two times we are going on that climb. So uh, not in the final two laps. But it's, um, it's a lot steeper than the 4.5% uh, indicated in the road book. I experienced that this morning <laughs> myself. Yeah, I didn't bring a bike, even though I drove over. I, didn't, I decided uh, not to bring a bike. Next I wish year. I had, really. Next year. Next year, maybe, yeah. But stunning circumstances here um, in Luxembourg. Catherine uh, Hamas, of course, is a bit of a breakaway expert. She's, off, she's a super aggressive rider, and uh, she's often off the front. Um, and uh, an exciting, she's the kind of rider that enlivens a race, animates a race, and um, 
one of the people responsible for making some of the racing interesting and of course as well she's in though the the team are one of the uh, UCI continental teams they are one of the better teams in that classification just below the world teams um, and certainly Sarah is at WNT are one of those one of those top continental teams I would say absolutely but to um, get a world tour license um, you have to have a plan for four years and some sponsors don't have a four-year plan just yet they don't have or some teams they don't have the commitment of a sponsor for four years but you have to go with a dossier to the um, UCI in Switzerland saying okay I've got four years of funding I'm planning to pay my riders that minimum salary I'm planning on giving them uh, ample insurance on giving them maternity leave if they want to. Of course, on drops the call, um, or in Kemstafosi, was it? They have a, a rider on maternity leave. They do, yeah. And uh, they don't Bex even. A, and they don't. They're not even uh, a World Tour race, so that's a very decent thing by the uh, British team. There was, a, it, there was a team photo when the, they they changed to uh, Cam's Basto bikes recently, and there was a team photo of uh, of Bex looking pregnant wearing her kit cool. which I thought was quite nice well you can you can actually ride uh, quite far on into your pregnancy um, which is of course a fantastic way to keep fit this What's is uh, the difference seconds. 40 seconds is what the um, ardoisier is it called in French I actually don't know the English word for it the time board the time board <laughs> but Ardoisier is actually a person so it would be the time board keeper mm. it's some, some of these things you just don't know keeper the, of the board keeper of the board sounds yeah, very sounds, Harry Potter yeah it sounds very <laughs> medieval doesn't it yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, uh, in a way I'm, I'm slightly disappointed to see Talita de Jong off the front here because uh, it would be nice to see a rider like her winning the race and if you're being aggressive we saw a before she went in the breakaway, um, we saw her on the front. And but so it was clear that, but she's not going to win a sprint, I don't think. No, but um, of course we haven't seen how uh, the breakaway just was formed. But this could also be kind of an accidental thing. Yeah, they looks, were the two first over riders the top, over yeah. the top. And like, well, nobody was following and everybody was still, like looking at each other. We saw early on in the race that uh, Jumbo Visma was um, making a real aggressive race you know, on the first climb. Yeah dropping at least 30 riders already. We have 106 riders here at the start line, by the way. So uh, that was one third of the peloton dropped by the work of, uh, amongst others, Tonki Bekaus. So that was a really aggressive move by the team who, of course, have uh, Karl Heinz Finkels high up in the overall. But I think um, this might be an interesting race for Rianna Marker. She's focusing on this period of the year. Karl-Heinz Swinkels, if you were looking for her in the yellow or black of um, Jumbo Visma, is actually wearing the polka dot jersey. Um, uh, the Imolosh um, polka dot jersey. So don't look for her wearing yellow and black. She's wearing white with the red polka dots, the traditional climber's jersey. Of course, uh, we didn't have any points awarded yesterday during the prologue, but yeah. they uh, did award the jersey. So nice for Karl-Heinz that she has uh, a polka dot jersey to... Uh, add to her cycling momentum. She also has a rainbow jersey, by the way. She does. Um, she was a, a jersey champ. or a... A jersey, yeah. Or a skin suit. Uh, <laughs> probably a skin suit. Um, she's the junior world champion of the time trial in Qatar, uh, Caroline Swinkles, that year where Elisa Balsamo um, won the road race title. The gap now won uh, 24, so um, either the graphics are wrong or the uh, time board keeper from Harry Potter is not correct. But um, it looks like the gap is increasing a little bit now. These roads are absolutely amazing. Um, so smooth. <laughs> um, you would wish that Belgium does that too in the Ardennes.
smooth roads. Um, I, I, I live in Cambridgeshire, and and there, you have smooth roads there. Too? And there aren't many of them around oh. there. I, I, I was in Glasgow two years ago, mm -hmm. and I was absolutely shocked. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but we in, in the Netherlands we pay a huge amount of road tax. Yeah. So um, that's why they make roads, and that's the same here in Luxembourg. The tax rates here in Luxembourg are quite high. It's one of the most affluent countries of the European Union. Um, quite a small country with a lot of European Union institutions. The Court of Justice, the much hated Court of Justice, if you ask Boris Johnson, is uh, located here in Luxembourg. Um, Owen is now laughing really hard. Well, we agreed that we would not bring up any Brexit stuff, but Luxembourg is, is the country, actually the country in the European Union where uh, the most people say that they want to uh, stay part of, stay a member of the European Union. And because the country is so very small and is dependent, oof, wow, this is looking really bad. I think you were right, Owen, that she went over her handlebars and this is the second big crash for Lorena Vibus this season after that uh, crash on the TT circuit in uh, the Healthy Aging Tour. Just look at her left elbow there. Oh. Not only is it bleeding, but it's Ouch. badly swollen. Um, this is bad. I wouldn't say it's broken. I haven't broken both my elbows. Um, at the same time? Uh, no, oh. in se separate incidents. But um, she's not good, is she? No, this is, uh, this is looking really, really bad for her. You can see that on that left elbow, she's not putting too much pressure on it. And it shows, you know, yeah, yeah you can see there's a huge bump on it um, and bleeding profusely. And, and yesterday, I remember saying yesterday, up oh, some paracetamol from the race doctor. I remember saying yesterday, so good luck getting Lorena Vibas out of that yellow jersey. But yeah. this is still bike racing and you still have to stay on your bike as well. And it's not that she, maybe she wasn't at fault because she was too late in, in braking. Um, but this is also part of the sport, but it's, it's horrible to see her um, hurt so badly again the first yeah. time of course being just one and a half month ago it, it's interesting actually someone someone um, contacted me on Twitter this morning or contacted I think she whoever it was I can't remember mentioned both of us actually talking about the shorts that she was wearing and you can see they've, they've actually torn there but they have this uh, strong fabric uh, in the here this is the crash again. The crash. Look at the rider on the right side of the road in that yellow jersey. A little bit ahead, so not the rider of Stade Rochelet, but a little bit further on. There's some braking going on there at the right side of the road. You can just see a knee coming out there. And she is... Oh, oh, jeepers. She is on the bottom of the pile oh, there. Yeah, she's on the bottom. So she wasn't the rider that went over the top. That was her that, teammate yeah, yeah. Uh, with a number four, Julie van der Felder. So uh, two of the riders of the uh, Jumbo Visma team down, uh, two riders of, um, well, not the same team, they're of course DSM and Jumbo Visma, excuse me. But uh, this is going to uh, change the entire dynamic of the race. Of course, Lorena Vibes, she has a three second advantage on the competition um, after that prologue. And of course, with her sprinting prowess, especially on a, on a climb, on a hilly uh, sprint finish like this one, I, I personally thought, well, Good luck to yeah. everybody else. Well, but this is going to change ev everything. Well, interestingly, I, I was talking to Leah Kirschman this morning, the, um, who, who is second on GC, three seconds down. And I, I mentioned to her that um, just uh, Corinne Rivera there, um, comforting her teammate. You can see where all her gels have burst. On, she certainly hasn't broken that elbow, I don't think, the way she can move it. Um, Yosa has just knocked the window out <laughs> of our commentary box. <laughs> this is true. Um, yeah, the, <laughs> I just... Leia Kirschman, I, I was talking about, and she, she loves a bunch sprint, a, a tight, aggressive, uphill bunch sprint, and she would be absolutely perfect for a sprint like this. Whether Lorena Vivis would have been um, better for this sprint, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but they do have a plan B, and that is Leah, Kirsch, uh, Leah Kirschman. Because uh, the next DSM rider down the classification is actually Juliette Labousse, who starts the day eight seconds down. Um, Juliette is not a sprinter. She's got a, a massive engine. She can climb really well. I think she was fifth at uh, Liège-Bastogne-Liège, or sixth. Uh, in flesh. 
In, yeah. So she, I mean, she, but she's a different kind of rider. And Corinne Rivera was 10 seconds down. And she is a sprinter. She would also be perfect for this. So there'll be a, a lot of um, chat going on, I, among, uh, I imagine, amongst the riders and with their DS, uh, Albert Timmer, in the, uh, in the car behind, just formulating a different strategy, whether they go with plan A, plan B. Um, that'll all be going on now. Or they may already have formulated a plan. Uh, a little bit of uh, background information. We are in a commentary box here at the finish line, and it was. Um, um, I was trying to open the window and just basically knock the entire window out. <laughs> so we don't have a window anymore, but we do have fresh air. So um, it's uh, a win and lose situation. Yeah, I hope well, the window can be fixed for tomorrow. <laughs> well, hopefully, no one will stand outside the window on the phone as they were standing outside the door. Oh, anyways, um, always fun. Yesterday we had a power cut one minute before we were due to go live, and today I just uh, wrecked the entire commentary box. This is the climb, actually. Um, that part coming off the big road was the easy part of the climb, the 2%, and then this is the hard part. It starts with 5 6% and going up towards 11 at the uh, final 200 metres. And truth be told, Owen Rogers. I had to dismount. Did you? I oh, did. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. You just saw a change of cadence there from uh, Dion as she uh, switched into the little ring. Just saw a, a, a cadence speed up as she's dropped down into a, a, the easier gears. Yeah, this is absolutely a small ring climb. Um, there's no, not anybody who can boss this until the finish line. We just passed the campsite there. And mind you, we're going to do this lap four times, so this is really a hard stage for the peloton, especially because there's also such a big difference in quality between the top riders, um, race winners like, like Ruth Winder or Christine Majerus who have won races this year. Um, some of them are from the top of my head, there's probably other winners as well. Um, and some of the smaller teams, uh, if you look at the results yesterday, you can see that the World Cycling Center team well, they had really big trouble keeping up. And of course, the differences are really small. There's about 15 riders at 12 seconds from, or 22 seconds from Lorena Vibus in the GC. But um, the difference in quality is, um, is huge. And I think many riders will abandon today, especially because the road book says the jury permits um, themselves to take riders out of the race with a eight minute um, gap when they dropped right. more than eight minutes and that is because you have to clear the roads this is not the kind of road where uh, not the kind of race where you can uh, close the roads around here for four laps of 20k so that's over two hours so when the peloton has passed they will open the roads again yes that's right it'll be a ro what you call a rolling block you can see the uh Sarah Tizit WNT team car desperately wants to get up to service uh, Hamas in the break, but she, the, the peloton's just not letting them, uh, letting them go through. The jury, for, uh, the jury uh, chairman here is a British um, commissaire, Paul Watson. I wonder what he was saying. <laughs> It looks it, it, very Italian. It, it's not usual to see an Englishman stick two fingers up um, in that direction. I don't C know the I English as being that rude, indeed. Um, I, don't, I don't know. This is, um, this is uh, the last part of the climb is a place where we don't have any reception, unfortunately. Um, so that's why we have to switch back to uh, our fixed camera position. Um, a race like this is covered on 4G. Um, enabling you to see these fantastic images from uh, the motorbike. There's um, three motorbikes in the race and uh, many fixed cameras um, to show you the race. But there's one small part on the local lap and it's actually 400 meters where there's no reception. Right. <laughs> Zero. Yeah. Nina Berton, one of the... Uh, uh, ah, look, she's been down the road there, so... She's one of the Luxembourg riders. I don't know what happened there. Just a touch of wheels, maybe. And you can also see uh, the team car of Bingle really wanting to go to the front. The gap is already two minutes, and they have been leading this race uh, over uh, 25 kilometers. So that's 40, 
almost 40 minutes. This is the steepest part. There's a little S turn here where luckily we do have uh, crystal clear images for you and some uh, spectators. Officially not allowed, but these riders will love a little bit Just of cheering. Just a cheer, definitely. This is the last part of the climb. Then we go left. And it looks so easy if they do it. They make it look so super easy. Yeah, it's, I have to say, at 8%, my cadence, even in my smallest gears, is, is not quite that fast. But then I have a fair bit of um, beer to lug around with me hanging off the front of my body. <laughs> well, let's not get into detail, shall we? <laughs> good to see the riders <laughs> communicating there. And um, the other thing I thought was good to see was uh, Nina Berton instantly back up and back in the bunch, which was uh, good to see. She'll be desperate to um, uh, impress here in a, what is obviously her home race. Yeah, she's one of the few uh, Luxembourg riders here. Unfortunately, Claire Faber, who is uh, Luxembourg's second rider uh, behind uh, Christine Majerus um, had a horrific traffic accident a few, year, a few days ago here on the Luxembourg roads, uh, hit by a car by, a, by an inattentive motorist I should say, it's not the car's fault it was the motorist's fault um, many broken ribs, broken collarbone, broken jaw um, she's facing a long recovery period and of course um, devastating for her that she crashed and, and yeah. even more devastating that she's missing out on her home race and of course Christine Majerus has been flying the flag for Luxembourg for many years but uh, Claire Faber is an up-and-coming rider and hopefully uh, one day she'll take the crown of uh, Christine Majerus just like we saw in the men's uh, peloton with uh, Kevin Chignettes last year finally beating Bob Jungels. <laughs> Interestingly uh, Berton is a double national junior road race and um, time trial champion so you know, she may, in the long term, she's only 19 now, be a rider to take over uh, Majerus's crown. I was just looking at those skid marks on the road there. Someone's, um, something's gone quite wrong there. Yeah, hopefully uh, that's fine. This is, uh, the, the people involved are fine. This is the yeah. final five kilometers of the lap. A downhill, basically, until 3K to go. And then we've got a pretty steep, um, climb in the village going up uh, about 400 meters at uh, 8% and then a sweeping downhill into the village of uh, Steinfurt and you said it's a shame to see somebody like Talita the Young uh, attacking but this also might be an attack all the way to, to the finish the line that's right yeah because yeah. i don't see a very organized chase just yet and of course it should be teams like sd works or um uh, the track sega fredo doing this or dsm or yeah. team dsm if they regroup and uh, and play the card of lea kirchman but um for now there's not a lot of organization just yet enabling uh, many riders to come back after that climb and of course, with the bottle rule, you can throw away your bottles there because they're swan years. Yeah. Just interesting to see uh, one of my favorite teams in the bubble, bu bubble gum pink and <laughs> navy blue is Valcar Travel and Service. Uh, and I was saying immediately prior to the start that they have one of the best lead outs in, in the sport at the moment. You only have to watch the final stage of the Cerritis Ch Challenge last year to see how they bossed that race and who are we talking about as a sprinter consoni well, or balsamo i think today you'd have to go for balsamo um, i think she's uh, better at an uphill sprint than uh, than consoni though yeah, they're both good i just think balsamo is that much that that tiny bit bit better Great to see that uh, in the peloton, uh, Danny Christmas went for the last available point for the mountain classification, the queen of the mountain classification, meaning that she's at seven points now. Katrin Hammers, of course, having um, um, 11 at the moment, but still um, Danny Christmas tries to keep herself in contention for that um, queen of the mountains jersey and possibly a trip to the podium tomorrow night after stage two. And for drops the call, that is a fantastic result to have somebody on the podium. So good for Danny Christmas that she's really going for those GPM points available.
If you're joining us now here on the Festival LC Jacobs, the Siratisit Festival LC Jacobs, we're halfway into the race. This is a stage of 125.1 kilometers, which is, uh, according to the research of Owen Rogers, which is entirely trustworthy, I can tell you, um, <laughs> is you. the longest stage ever in this race. Uh, we have two leaders um, that got away, we think, accidentally on the second GPM. Uh, with Talita de Jong in the blue and um, black, blue, black, red swimming pool jersey <laughs> of uh, Bingle Chevalmere and Kathleen Hamas, the rider for Siratisi WNT. They have a gap of two minutes and 10 seconds at the moment with still 63 kilometers to go. And we're now in that final three kilometers. And this, Rowan, is that little hill that this I was talking dig. about. Yeah, yeah. Can I just say on the research front, all my yeah. research is uh, entirely due to pro cycling stats. <laughs> Well, you do have a fantastic rhubarb story that was not on Press I do stats. have a good rhubarb story. So, uh, shall we do the rhubarb yeah. story after the finish line? Yeah. Or can you do the rhubarb story now? Well, yeah. let's yeah. go for it. I, I, I could talk for hours, but it, this was inspired by the uh, chat of uh, you and Magnus Backstead earlier in the year about cheese. So yeah, I've, I've, I've got quite the reputation now of being a cheese fan, which is entirely true, but. So um, that's how people know me now. <laughs> Mrs. Cheese, yeah. So uh, I, I looked up some British cheeses, and there are actually 700 varieties of cheese in Britain alone, with cheddar being the most popular, with over 50% of the sales. But very few of those cheeses are protected um, cheeses. That protected have to names. Yeah. yeah. Like, like in wine, you would get... Um, uh, Appellation d'origine contrôlée, or um, all the other um, DOC. DOCs uh, and all those things that you get uh, in uh, a lot of Europe. But there are very few of those in the UK. There's a protected designation of origin, PDO. PGI is protected geographical indication. And tradition speciality guaranteed is another one. And there aren't many cheeses that, uh, that are, are designated, one of which is actually Wensleydale, which for those of you that know Wallace and Gromit, <laughs> um, we'll know is uh, Wallace's favourite cheese. Hold on, we, we, we will end up with rhubarb. We will end up with rhubarb because there are plenty of other things that are given one of those denominations, one of which is Yorkshire forced rhubarb. And it can only be grown by traditional methods in what's called the rhubarb triangle, which is between the <laughs> Yorkshire... There's no such thing. <laughs> there, there is, I promise you. The, 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 the Yorkshire cities of uh, Leeds, Wake Field and Bradford, uh, and this it's in this area. Now here we come. Yeah, here we, here yeah, we go. The, the rhubarb this, triangle. The, the, yeah. the rhubarb triangle. Yeah. Now according I'm on the edge to of my seat now. the wonderful book, The Greatest, by Will Fotheringham, <laughs> um, which is a fantastic book if you uh, want to get hold of it. Um, this is where Beryl uh, buy Burton. It, buy it at your local bookstore and not, you, and not yeah. online. Beryl Bur or from Will's website, um, you can buy it directly from him, and you'll find him Will Fov on um, at Will Fov on Twitter. But Beryl Burton, the great Beryl Burton, one of the greatest British cyclists that's ever lived, um, she used to work. She worked throughout her cy cycling career, working on farms, and she was part of uh, her boss, who was also her coach, used to uh, run a rhubarb farm, and she would cut rhubarb. Rhubarb and. How do we get back to Elsie Jacobs? Because they were both contemporaries. <laughs> uh, they used to race against each other, and they were very similar types of riders. They were about power and engine, as opposed to about uh, about sprint. So, you'll, you know, from from reading about both women, you'll find that they weren't sprinters. It, it was about getting off the bunch. So, rhubarb check. That was a great story. No, I'll delete that now. Um, no, it's fine. This is this is one for eternity. My um, wife had rhubarb rhubarb yogurt recently. I didn't like that. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Um, never mind. <laughs> we just this is that hill, and you can see that uh, the riders are attacking this hill. And if you have good legs, 60 kilometres from now. This is a fantastic place to launch your attack and to avoid that bunch sprint. Yeah, that, that was a, uh, a classified climb last time, I seem to recall. It was hard. It was pretty steep, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. And there's a, a dog uh, kennel there at the top. Let's hope none of them uh, get Austra out. With Australian Shepherds. Yeah. Neve Fisher-Black, the uh, former New Zealand champion there on the front for SD Works. 
and she is really up the pace on that climb. She's a fantastic climber. She was second at the final stage of the Giro Rosa last year, I seem to recall. But as you can see, this is that long sweeping right-hander that uh, through the technical part, coming out of town and up towards the finish line. Uh, Hamas is there on the front as a Hamas, as opposed to Hamis, very English, sorry. Uh, and you can see the road just start to kick up very slightly if the camera can lift up there you go we've got 500 meter sign here on the left uh, you can see it in the cadence of uh, Catherine yeah. Hummus uh, that the cadence is getting a little bit more she's labored. still in the big ring and De Jong is already in the little ring De Jong is a part of the Bingle Chevalmer team and like I said yesterday Chevalmer is actually a swimming pool company so um I don't know if you get a complimentary swimming pool I do know that they're sponsored by a dog food company and really? all the riders get dog food for their dogs, not for themselves. Um, cat food is a, an option as well. Well, I'll be. It's called that's Happy Dog. So oh, I, that's yeah, but that's, that's the power of social media. Mm. I see these riders with their dogs and, and the team sponsor. So, yeah. But they're here with um, their team with uh, Talita de Jong, of course, her sister, Demi. Um, also Natalie van Gogh, Justine Geskiere, Claudia Jogerius and Kelly van der Steen. They're now crossing the finish line with uh, three more laps to go. The gap is approaching three minutes. And Owen, it's, it's not something that you see often in women's racing that we have a breakaway with no, such you, a big gap. No, you, it's very rare to get the... In, in a lot of the men's racing, you'll see big breaks, four, five, six minutes. Um, and I do remember a, 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 um, a very long break going in a long stage of the uh, women's tour, the Over Energy Women's Tour in 19. Um, and that got out to eight minutes before Ellen van Dyke got a bit bored uh, and brought it back. There was a crash. You'll see the, the, the barriers there on the, on the side of the road. There was a crash here the last time we... we rode this stage it was very very wet and very cold i think it was um maria giulia confalonieri went down there but i've got a stopwatch on just to see um to see what the um tie the actual gap is because with 60k to go Look and at such a small peloton yeah, they really have been uh, eroded here we go again is that an attack again the fisher no. black um and jumbo visma have been doing a lot of work early on in the race to decimate the peloton and now it was uh, SD Works doing that. Um, let's see if the gap is actually be getting uh, a little bit smaller. We can see uh, Elise Chavet there, the uh, wonderful Swiss national champions jersey Lovely by, jersey, uh, by Canyon yeah. Schramm. Yeah. They have amazing kit um, and that jersey. And if you have the possibility maybe to get a shot of a bike that is equally pretty, in the colours of the Swiss national flag, of course, the red and the white. And uh, Shabit, she was, um, she's from Geneva, from the French-speaking part of the country, a doctor. She, yes, uh, that's she right. Worked, uh, she worked in the COVID ward last year during the uh, pandemic because, like she said, I, I didn't have anything else to do. So, um, <laughs> like her and also uh, Erika Magnaldi, they are um, graduated doctors. But look at the damage done on that little hill, uh, 3k to go, and the peloton is now down to, well, 60 riders? Yeah, it's, it's, it is two minutes. The gap is just around, just about two minutes. There you go, 2.01. It's uh, getting smaller. Yeah, yeah. And of course, we still have uh, three more laps to go, and the peloton tested the legs, and normally two against uh, a peloton with strong teams. We haven't seen any work, for example, done yet by Trek Segafredo. They still keep no. all their firepower with Ruth Winder and Taylor Wiles and, of course, Van Anderoy Buxted. Um, I might as well name them all then. Um, Diederiksen and um, uh, uh, Loretta Hansen, the, I would say, one of the most one of the strongest domestiques this spring season. And domestiques often go unnoticed, yes. but she is, um, she's been pivotal to uh, the work and the and the victories that Trek Sigafredo has had so far the well almost always smiling Australian she <laughs> she lives um, in the Netherlands during oh, this season uh, near Gouda uh, near where I live and um, cheese country cheese country exactly actually in Stolwijk which is uh, um, a, a, a quite a, a prominent cheese name Stolwijk cheese and uh, she and Ellen van Dijk, they live uh, quite close to each other. Mm -hmm. um, they train together. Ah, uh, right. I, I quite often see them riding. 
and then I wave and they pass me with incredible speed and sometimes if they have a good mood I can hang on. Uh, I saw, I, I see um, Hayley Simmons, uh, she lives near me, former British time trial champion, currently riding with uh, Cam's Basso Bikes. I see her occasionally, but I did want to go out with Harry Tanfield, who's Oof. now riding with Quebecer Assos. Uh, and the we, uh, Tour of Yorkshire stage winner. Yes, that's right. And we went down, to, uh, we did about uh, 120, 130k on a very cold day. Uh, and the minute we left him uh, at um, his girlfriend's house in Cambridge, I absolute colla absolutely collapsed and could barely turn a pedal and still had a still had about 20, well, yeah, about and then you caught 20k your wife. to get home. And then you caught your wife to pick you up. Uh, no, I oh, didn't. Okay. No, no, I didn't. Well, you can see that there is a little bit of um, determination, in, determination there, in the chase now. And, uh, of course, Team DSM, as you explained before, they don't only have Lorena Vivas. She's still in this group, by the way. So she did um, get over those climbs with the first group, indicating that she's still okay-ish, after how, how okay you can be after a crash like she had. Um, but Team DSM also have Kirchmann to play for, or yes. Rivera. So they yep. have many... Uh, many cards to play. Team led here by former um, professional rider of one of the predecessors of this team, uh, Albert Timmer. Um, one of, well, also one of the great domestiques yeah. in the Tour de France squads for Skill Shimano, Argo Shimano with Marcel Kittel and everything. And he's now leading a women's team and that is really great. I remember that with Team Movistar that uh, Pablo Lastras actually asked the team management if he could um, he? lead the women's team, yep. which indicates that um, things are changing and um, many um, sports directors all, all see the fun in, in being involved in women's cycling. While only a few years ago, to be really honest, um, there were a, a few dedicated sports directors in the women's peloton, but there were also quite a few eyeing, eyeing a seat in the men's peloton. Yeah, yeah. Danny Stam, of course, being perhaps the longest, the longest serving ex-professional that's, um, that's uh, leading a women's team. I once did commentary with Danny Stam when I worked at Eurosport Netherlands uh, for a track meeting. And, um, he, a he great six-day rider, wasn't he? He was a fantastic six-day rider. Won Rotterdam uh, quite a few times uh, with, with Robert Slibbens. And um, he just didn't talk. Which was, uh, it was, it was one of my first months at Eurosport doing a commentary as a lead commentator and he just didn't talk. He I was very, very quiet. I and can imagine. I, had, I didn't have any experience at all back, back then in track cycling. So I relied on the expert sitting next to me and he was like, yeah, nay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, like, come on, man, just say something insightful. And that was the last time he did commentary, I think. Uh, it, no, well, with me, that was. Knowing so. Danny, <laughs> if, if, he's, if he's watching today, there'll be a little smile on his face <laughs> when you tell that story. Yeah, well, he's, he's a fantastic sports director. But he won't director. say anything. Yeah, and yeah, the great thing with, uh, with Denny Stom is that um, he has so many champions on his team. And if you look at SD Works now, I think they have one with seven different riders already and that is how he how he fantastically manages that team he makes sure that all the riders get their opportunities and that it's not all for Anna van der Breche or yeah. all for Demi Vollering and that it's a, a, a well and true team spirit going on he, in he, that team and you have to manage expectations exactly. and that's what he said in in the run-up series as well it's about managing expectations of all your riders and giving them ample opportunity in like a smaller race like this one yep. or one of those 1.1 races in Belgium, for example, or next week in Valencia, which is a 2.1 race. Uh, take your younger riders there and give them a task or an opportunity or a responsibility and, and they will grow. And you can see it already with, with Anna Shackley, for example. Yes, yeah, I spoke to Anna this morning and um, it, it is interesting to see the way that Danny leads and inspires his team. It, it, you know he's he's got good riders, but of he's course. he's helped create some of those, and I think we will see in the coming years we will see the likes of uh, Neve Fisher Black and Nikola Noskova, uh, uh, Anna Shackley, all being developed in into what I'm sure the team hope will be replacements for those riders who are retiring. 
Well, of course, two of the most important riders are retiring with uh, Anna van der Breg at the end of this year and uh, Chantal van der Broek Blaak at the end of the Classics campaign after Roubaix uh, 2022. And let's hope that uh, it's going to be the second Perry Roubaix ever and not the first. Because did you know that by the time we write Roubaix on the 2nd of October, it's been almost a thousand days since the last Roubaix. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a terrible, terrible statistic. Uh, Elisa Balsamo there, and also coming to the front in the yellow jersey with the blood on her knees, on her elbows, and on her shoulder. Um, yeah, like somebody said on Twitter very smartly, it looks like the jerseys of uh, DSM don't have that fabric. Well, of course, she's not wearing a jersey by... Um, the team she's wearing the jersey of the organizers yeah the the, the fabric <laughs> is is down the outside on the hips and down the outside of uh, of the legs um i think and and it makes them thicker and you couldn't really have them on the top for, for fear of the riders overheating really okay. um but someone messaged me t talking about i wonder if they'll ever be, uh, any other manufacturers will be looking to incorporate some of this anti-abrasive stuff into into their clothes and whether or not the UCI would ever see that as a useful thing to increase safety within the sport and well, legislate for that. UCI is all about safety. Apparently. Mm -hmm. so that's what, yeah, they, that's apparently, what we're told. Yeah, that's right. Of course, there have yeah. been fantastic measures. And of course, this organiser is also very concerned about safety. Um, Last year, the Skoda Tour de Luxembourg, which is a different organiser, by the way, um, had huge trouble with cars on the road, trucks coming into the opposite direction, and are under increased scrutiny by the UCI. They were awarded a new licence for this year to be part of the uh, Pro Series for Men. Um, but it means that they have a really extensive safety plan, Owen, for, for this race as well. And, and to be Pro Series, even, because last time they were 2.1, so they have uh, promoted themselves to the Pro Series category. Um, it means that you also have to comply with not only, for example, higher start fees, higher price money, but also um, have a more detailed uh, security plan. That's right, yeah. And, 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 and security plan is actually longer than the road book. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. And that's all cost and time and effort for the organisers on top of that which they already have to put in. And they do a fantastic job. And of course, the organisers here are not full-time paid organisers. They are people who love to put the race on and they work during the day and then organise this in essentially in the evening. It's a tough job. It's a tough job. And they start organising... Um, the 2022 race, uh, I think, on Tuesday. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but that's, they, that's they have to get going. That is normal. Yeah. Um, that um, even even with amateur races, or I'm involved with a kids race, for example, um, a youth tour, which sadly we have had to cancel for the second consecutive year. Um, we basically start planning the month after it's finished. With your with your evaluation, saying like what the things that went well, things that we shouldn't be doing again. Um, I got a message by uh, Floyd Mackay, uh, of course, rider of DSM, and she says to me, um, she also had that normally they also have Dyneema, that is that specific fabric um, that um, they use by Team DSM um, for their jerseys and even their undershirts. Really? Yeah. Crikey. And DSM is, um, well, f formally, the DSM is an abbreviation of Dutch state mines. It's in the south of the country, near Maastricht, so near where the Amstel Gold race is. Uh, it's now one of the biggest chemical companies in, uh, in the Netherlands, and even bigger than that. And they're quite an innovative um, um, company, making all sorts of materials. And um, I read the other day that there's uh, three employees of, of, uh, of DSM who make uh, cycling jerseys out of um, recycled bottles. Yeah. That, that Five bottles per jersey. They're not actually one of the, 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 the big polluters of chemical companies, are they? They're quite, considering what they do, I well, understand com that. Com <laughs> compared to the um, yeah. uh, nuclear power plant that we have at the foot of the Mur de Huy? No. That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the new things that we also saw in the Ardennes Classics, for example. Um, and this is that um, um, construction site that I mentioned uh, a while ago. Um, these um, 
interactive signs are fantastic. And um, we said about the UCI being involved with, with safety. They are, of course. And I know that at the UCI headquarters now, uh, the road director is a Belgian man called Peter van der Abele. They're already discussing there how to um, implement these Boplon um, barriers that they use, for example, in the E3 price, um, to implement them um, in other races as well, because they don't have these outstanding feet. And those are the kind of things that, that they're working on. But there are rules for barriers, but they only come into, um, into play next year to give the organizers time to actually buy new barriers. Yeah. Or rent them. Let's hope no one goes flying through the barriers as happened at the Tour of Poland last year. Oh, God. Again. Um. Movistar with, uh, of course, their Danish national champion, Emma Norsgaard, is um, prominently she... at the front already. And Norsgaard can actually win this stage yes. as well. And um, I don't know how many second places she has at the moment, but um, I think there will be a collective cheer amongst us women cycling fans if Emma Norsgaard actually wins a big race. I spoke to her just ahead of uh, Brugge de Pana, actually, and um, she's sort of kind of very aware of, of her lack of a win so far and all those second places. But even with the second places, I think Movistar are actually the second team on the UCI ranking. And if you would have taught me that last year, I would not have believed you. So uh, uh, second places give a lot of but, points. But that's, that's true. That, you're right. Bear in mind, of course, that, um, that Flanders with um, Van Vleuten was, was, was their first World Tour win in three, the three years of, of course, ex experience. Of course, but... Um, but w as soon as you know, knew that um, Annemiek was going there, then you knew there would be victories. Um, but I spoke to her as well, and I, I think a lot of her role is, is education as well of, of the other younger riders. For Van Vleuten? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just her influence. It's, it's not so much formal sit sitting down in classes. It, it's, it's just rubbing her knowledge off on, on the mm. rest of the team. Oh, she loves doing uh, that. And Yes, yeah. And they will benefit from her pr presence. Oh, well, you can see, like, um, it's not only about Norsgaard and um, Hanemiek van Vleuten, but also somebody like Jelena Erich, uh, who was second in Moeskroen. Uh, Leah Thomas, who is riding here as well, has been showing great form. The, the team here, led by uh, Jorge Sanz, um, the, the sports director, um, Anik, um Guarishi, Norsgaard, Alba Tiruel, Lourdes Oyabide and, and Leah Thomas. That is the team of six riders here for Movistar who had um, a pretty good weekend so far with, uh, of course, a win by Marc Soler. Yes, yeah, I, I watched that, the rest of that this morning. Those roads looked very, 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 very slippery. And wet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, we, I think we, we just witnessed the crash of the year in Romandie. So uh, if you haven't seen it yet, it happens in the final kilometre and it's, it's, it's bad. But it's, it's not bad that the rider is, is, is bad, but... The, the, the crash is it, it will be a meme I can assure you that it will be a meme Katrin Hammers Talita de Jong are leading this race now since um, well 40 kilometers so they've been leading the race uh, for an hour already and still working uh, well together and the gap is constant around the two minute map uh, mark with uh, Talita de Jong communicating with her sports director, Davy Weinand, in the car behind her. Cars have made it across, and they're on their way to the climb again, the climb of uh, Sima Farm. But this looks like a more organized chase now. We are going towards, uh, well, the final hour of the race. I think the next time we cross the finish line, we still have uh, just over an hour of racing to go. And um, it looks like the chase is more organized and more... 
Yeah, it, it's actually interesting. I wonder if teams have been calling the bluff of DSM and saying, well, come on, you've got the top two on GC, both of whom could win the sprint. You better come to the front and chase it down. And, and now they have. Is that uh, Pepe Camp on the front? Uh, yeah. It's Le Boost just coming through. Um, uh, and of course, Movistar, they've got just as good a chance. Of, of winning. I, I think perhaps Trek Segafredo, uh, I mean, who are they going to go for here that, to, to take a stage win? Um, why, why should they come to the front uh, and, and do the work? Because they have no obvious sprinter here. Normally you would say Amelie Diedrichsen, but uh, it looks like she's in a different um, cycle of her career, of yeah. course, eyeing Tokyo, of course. Uh, the track championships there with uh, both the medicine and the Omnium. So I, th I think she's in a different training cycle at the moment. Uh, she got dropped on a relatively easy climb um, at the beginning of the race, indicating that, um, well, maybe she's not the dedicated sprinter on the team today. But uh, the team are working with Ruth Winder there, of course, the uh, national champion born in the UK. And um, I was doing the run-up series and I actually didn't know that. She moved to uh, the US when she was a kid and uh, got the American passport, um, naturally, otherwise she can't be American national champion. And uh, has been living there ever since yes. with her four siblings. I, I did know that. But when I, I interviewed her, oh, I, I, I can't even remember. And, and I asked her about her accent, and she said, well, I was born in England, and then I remembered. But she's born in Keithley in West Yorkshire, probably very, very close to the rhubarb triangle, <laughs> I, I would have thought. Uh, the, the rhubarb triangle is something that I will take away from this race, Owen. That is, that is not a more trivial piece of knowledge that we will take away from it, this race. It's not trivial if you're a rhubarb grow, grower <coughs> in the rhubarb triangle. I can tell you but that. But I've got these uh, this Bermuda triangle, rhubarb triangle, that there's like people going missing in fields in, and drowning in rhubarb. And well, perhaps it's the rhubarb that's going missing. Oh, definitely. Uh, I, I actually, well, I fancy <laughs> rhubarb crumble is a top, top, top English um, everything, dessert. Everything crumble is very English. We don't do crumble. We do crumble. If, uh, uh, if interesting enough, uh, Kathleen Hummers um, didn't take the points. And you would think that with the points she's already taken, that she maybe would have discussed this with Talita de Jong. Um, but uh, it was just de Jong powering on to the final uh, GPM of the day. And there's more attacking going on again by Jumbo Visma, trying to um, well, make it a smaller gap towards the two leaders who've been at the front now uh, for over an hour. And this is interesting with uh, a little attack there by Jumbo Visma. We can also see Majurus being very active. Yeah, just getting on top of the gear there, Majurus. Uh, just getting on top of her gear in order to, to go. I don't know if she switched from the big to the little ring. Here we go, that's Chabay just coming up with another of the Jumbo Visma riders on her wheel. Looks like Anushka Costa just coming up on her, on her wheel, maybe. Taylor Wiles there for Trek Segafredo. Yeah. There's stuff going on, isn't there, here? <laughs> Live cycling on the right. Live race, racing, my apologies. Chabet's been wonderfully aggressive through the Ardennes season, and she looks like she's carrying that on there. Also uh, very good for FDJ Nouvelle-Aquitaine are the riders. They had two riders pretty close in the uh, GC. Um, with uh, Marie Lenet, former Madison Junior World Champion, so track rider with uh, Victoire Berthaud, and also Clara Coponi. They have a lot of very young riders on the uh, on the team with um, also um, Yada Viel, also a very young rider who was uh, national champion when she was only 19 in France. Maëlle Grostet, Eugénie Duval, um, the slightly older riders and the well, most experienced rider on the team being uh, Lauren Kitchen, the Australian uh, Australian rider. That's very interesting. Sophia Bertisolo is the um, live racing rider there with uh, Leia Thomas, the Movistar, and Anushka Costa just kicking off there. Oh, look at that effort going in from Chabet to get on the wheel. Lovely, lovely. Well, finally, we have got some racing yeah, on our move. hands. <laughs> and uh, let's see what uh, Lorena Vibus is doing. She She's is here. She's I holding on. I don't think she is. The, the, the rider at the back of that group, I think, is one of the uh, Jumbo Vismas. I th she came over the group. 
Let's see. We we know that Kirchmann is there. Kirchmann, Kirchmann is, there is in, in the yellow jersey, and uh, yeah, she is, is there. Yeah, yeah, third from the back. Yeah third from the pack. She has, of course, a uh, different helmet than the Jumbo Visma riders. Costa with the Dutch bands there on her arms, uh, former Dutch national champion. Fantastic national championships last year, by the way, on the podium, uh, Anuska Costa on the Van Berg. And uh, this year we will have the Dutch national championships on the Van Berg again. So um, if need you can watch that, just uh, go and find it. Need some organisation now. Up the pace and keep going. Um, and get rid of that group behind you can see LA BTC Ljubljana just chasing on here and one of the uh, FDJ riders is that Lene? I would not be able to tell you that no just up the pace and her going off the front will cause live cycling live racing my, my apologies again to keep that move going and just some of those riders in that second group may stay in that second group and not get back on. Kirschman in the green, just about 10th, 12th wheel. Team of uh, Liv Racing here with uh, Bertit Solo, Valérie de May, uh, Jaskulska, Shana Korva, Evi Kuipers and Paulina Royakers. So uh, that's a pretty strong team led by uh, Erik van der Boom. So not Lars Boom, but Erik van der Boom. Uh, right, uh, the manager has been uh, part of the team. Uh, in all its predecessors. Well, yeah, this is uh, off, an yeah. interesting attack and uh, we can't wait to see a more accurate uh, time gap because we are racing now with uh, Valerie de Mer here for Liv Racing. They are making it wonderfully interesting to watch now at the moment with uh, Taylor Wiles gritting her teeth as she always does. Um, the last GPM we have seen Talita de Jong and um, um, Hamas. <laughs> thank you. I, well, that was a blackout. <laughs> Hamas uh, going over the top, and then in third place it was um, uh, uh, Sofia Bertizzolo, the rider we've seen uh, attack on that climb. The uh, Italian rider, 24 years of 23 years of age. She will be 24 this year. There's a little bit of a bar sticking out of the jersey of Katrin Hammers, and just like every race nowadays, we have a dedicated uh, zone on the lap, actually two um, zones on the lap where you can throw away your wrappers and bidons, etc. Um, one being uh, two kilometers from the finish line, as is mandatory now to have uh, one in, in the final. And of course, you can also throw um, bottles at your soigneur. Rhubarb Triangle even has a Wikipedia mention, uh, Owen. It's well, there you go. Absolutely ridiculous. There you go. Now you know. If it's on Wikipedia, you know it's true. Absolutely. Just on the uh, uh, polka dot jersey classification. It's uh, done. This was the last GPM. Yeah. So Kirchin Hamas is on 14 points. Talita de Jong on 13. And Danny Christmas on 7. So there's, there's your order. And Hamas tomorrow will wear the polka dot jersey. And tomorrow we have another 20 points on offer in this uh, jersey by uh, sponsored by Imo Losh, a uh, real estate company that is also a sub-sponsor of the Andy Schleck team. Well, this is it. This is uh, the peloton, and you can see that this is mostly made out of the World Tour teams. We can see the pink of the um, Volcar team, of course, with uh, two strong riders, Consoni and Balsamo. And also some of the drops the call riders are still in this first group. And it was interesting to see just behind the Valcar travel and service uh, pair was Lorena Vibis mm -hmm. back, back at the front of the race. I wouldn't be surprised if she just wins the stage. She's hard she, as nails. She is hard as nails. Really hard as nails. You can say that hard as nails because I've been told that you were told off by a certain rider for calling her diminutive. Yes, I was told <laughs> off. Yesterday I was <laughs> struggling for a word to describe Corin Rivera. And I was standing at the start uh, and Corin punished me uh, for calling her diminutive by asking me to put her rubbish in the bin. Yeah, rightly so. Uh, you can't call uh, somebody diminutive. So I, I apologised <laughs> profusely. <laughs> and she said, just call me small. Yeah, she's small. Um, so I'll, I'll call her small from now on. Sorry, Corinne. <laughs> I, told, I did tell her that I would apologise <laughs> well, <laughs> to the world. I set you up behalf. for this. Yeah. So this is uh, done. Rihanna Marcus is leading the race. Very great little gesture by the Jumbo Visma team to put the names on helmets for us. Yes. 
followed there by Taylor Wiles. We can see Lee Chabet there, the Swiss national champion. Bertit Solo is there as well. And we're on that, um, well, free 400 meter long climb to the dark kennels um, <laughs> at 3K to go. And this is where last lap, um, well... They Winder just struggling just behind the gap there with um, Rivera in the, on the back of this small group. Winder just coming across into a green zone, bin all your rubbish. This is uh, the green zone. There's wrappers flying all over the place. We can see that Kirchmann is there. Yep. And also there, I think it's um, Amber van der Hulst for the Park Hotel Valkenburg team. Balsamo there, she's been riding with the same glasses practically her entire career. That's at least how I recognize her. <laughs> and there is our small rider as well. Yes, yeah. Uh, on the front there is Taylor Wiles. Now, I, 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 I'm quite a fan of, her, of hers, really. And I just I, have a proper girl crush on her. I was there when she won a stage of uh, Imakami Bira. My Lord, was it cold. She oh, is just... Oh, my life. It was so cold. I had a T-shirt and a waterproof on. And the it was fun about two gurus, but it was a fantastic ride from The her. fun thing about Taylor Wiles is that she is just oozing life energy. She is... It looks like she's having fun in everything that she does. So I asked her for the run-up series, like, are you ever cranky? And she says, yes, I am. Um, so luckily for everybody out there, even Taylor Wiles sometimes gets cranky, um, which, is, which is reassuring for us mere mortals. But yeah, she's a fun rider to watch, and she's, um, she's, she's in a great place there with, uh, with the team. She's absolutely showing that she's loving what she does, and... Um, always with that grinter, that grin on her face. This last corner is going to be tricky yeah. um, going into the final. There's this pothole on the inside of the corner and of course the bales there on the outside of the corner. And just like you said, uh, Owen, two years ago, the last time we were here in Steinfurt, um, there was a huge crash there by uh, Maria Giulia Convalonieri, the rider who is uh, also in this race starting with number two. If you have any questions for me or for Owen about uh, cheese, rhubarb, or actual bike racing, <laughs> um, you, can, uh, you can send us a message on, on Twitter with uh, at Owen Rogers or uh, at Tour de Jose. So that's just Tour de France with my name, J-O-S-E. And yes, I've everywhere in the world, that's a men's name except for the Netherlands. I've been chastised by Liam Mealy. Yeah, Keith Lee is not in the rhubarb triangle. <gasps> it, it is the wrong end of West Yorkshire. I'm not an expert on West Yorkshire, so my apologies to both Liam is and, and West Yorkshire. Is rhubarb actually a fruit or a vegetable? Oh, that's a good question. I'd say because it comes directly out of the ground, then it must therefore be a vegetable. Because tomatoes are fruit. I think it's a vegetable. But um, we used to have a lot of rhubarb when I was younger, but I never had it. I think I haven't had rhubarb in 20 years. I might buy a jar or cook something or do something. I've been inspired now with the rhubarb triangle. Of course, the, the last couple of years I've brought, you, brought across from the UK for you um, some moisturiser or something, haven't I? But I would have been done by the, uh, by the um, French, sorry, the European import laws for, for, for bringing anything across these No, days. no, I wanted you to bring, like, chocolate from Hotel Chocolat, well, but you it? couldn't. Because yeah, you're not allowed to bring because because chocolate or, nope. or any beer. milk blade. No, no, no milk it's all based. confiscated. That's right. At the border. Well, two more laps to go for our two leaders, and we saw a little indication of the time, and we can see that the peloton is already on the hill. The gap is under a minute now with one more hour of racing to go. Elena Cecchini on the front there. And, of course, she has won a stage before she here. Has, yeah. Elena Cecchini riding for the uh, Lotto Belisol team back then. And this gap is now seriously much smaller. The uh, team cars of uh, uh, Bingol Chivalmera and also um, um, also Seretisi uh, uh, WNT uh, will have to leave that group pretty soon. And, um, well, not if they don't continue riding like this. But yeah. they know now that they can close the gap pretty rapidly. Interesting to see that we also have one of the riders of the Masi Tactic team that's a smaller... Um, Spanish team in the light blue mm. there on the right side of the road on the wheel of Taylor Wiles. 
You don't see them racing a lot in Northern Europe. They race a lot of the Spanish circuit, of course, uh, Masi Tactic. They're here with a group of uh, international riders, actually uh, only one Spanish rider on the team, uh, being uh, Mireille Benito. They have a rider from Norway, uh, Vita Heino, who's been, um, I think she's 37 already. Yeah, yeah. Um, Spela Ken, a rider from Slovenia, Michael Collier from the Netherlands, Gabriel Pilot Fortin from Canada, and uh, Olivia Beryl, also from Canada. So quite an international group there for the Massey Tactic Team. And... Um, well, they're quite an unknown team to me, so I wouldn't be able to name the rider who is in that first group um, at first glance. But we'll wait for numbers. But we can see that the uh, gap is now 26 seconds. The jury is gone, neutral support is gone, and the team managers are gone, meaning that this breakaway is about to end. Yeah, Vita Heiner is another aggressive rider. Uh, uh, an interesting fact, she may be Norwegian, but she was born in Latvia and took uh, Norwegian residency and um, nationality much later in life. There you go. Interesting point for you. You can't, you can't beat the rhubarb fact anymore. This is I know, a, a I, done deal. I think, I think I should perhaps go home because I've I finished. <laughs> My work here is done. <laughs> Oh, that is a Rihanna near miss Marcus. for Rihanna Marcus she, she, there. She got another one with, with a gel, I noticed. Leah Thomas at the front there, US rider from Movistar. But this is a fairly decent descent, isn't it? It's, uh, it's nice, wide and, and smooth. easy. Yeah, Hobsheim, Hobsheim, yeah? Don't Hobsheim, yeah. yeah. And then they, they turn right at the bottom. I tell you what, it, it, it um, reminds me a little, apart from the houses, and it's not quite as wide, as the uh, the new Quaremont as you go down the hill. That's what it reminded me of in Flanders. I have no idea what the new Quaremont looks like. Yeah, the, the outer Quaremont. I've been there many times, yeah. but the new Quaremont, I don't know. It comes down into town, into the town where they hang a right and then come back up the hill on the outer Quaremont. Ah, oh, that one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, big main road. Yeah, oh, is that the new Carnival? Yeah. Oh, I had mm. no idea. I thought it was just a road. But it has a name. But it, it can't be that other Carnival, you know. And it was so weird this year because I was there um, all by myself, as yeah. we have the privilege of journalists. Um, and I was oh, there. Was there a crash there? I think there was a crash just at the bottom of the climb there. I yeah, there we have a shoot confirmed on the race radio, so a crash. Well, good, good, good spot there, Owen. Let's see. It's my new glasses. It's they're they're fantastic. I'm wearing different ones from yesterday. Are you? <laughs> Sorry. Let's see if I'm looking at that. a screen. I'm not looking at you. <laughs> Let's see if um, if we have get some numbers images of the crash. Just the numbers of the riders. But you just get that wrong, and it is a tight, a tight right-hand turn, isn't it? Mm. There we go. Here we go. If Let's you just, see. there's, a, I think it's a yellow-coloured jersey. I hope it's not Lorena Vives again. I hope it's not Lorena Vives. I hope it's not anyone really. But it, yep. Oh, there's an LA rider goes down there. Just sliding out of that corner. Well, we have no numbers. Or and the gap going out now again. It's back up to 30 seconds. You can see the uh, commissaire is now in the gap. A British commissaire, like I said, Mr. Paul Watson, um, a race organiser uh, or the federation of a country usually provides the commissaires, but the president of the jury is always somebody who's not from the country the race is in. The other commissaires usually are... Um, usually the doping inspector is also from another country. And he's a qualified commissaire, isn't it? The yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, but the, the president of the jury is always from a, nif from a different country to avoid any uh, suspicion of being uh, prejudiced biased, towards yeah. uh, a bias. Exactly, that was the word I was looking for. And uh, these commissaires, they just do this as a volunteer job. I think they get... Um, 81 is one of the riders involved, that is Bertizzolo. 
Um, commissaires get their planning um, way ahead of time. Um, if you look at the UCI website at a race, you can see that the uh, president of a jury is usually um, already indicated, and they get a volunteer fee. I think it's yeah. around 150 euros yeah. a day, and of course your travel and expenses yeah. and stuff like that. But they just have an ordinary job. Yes, that's right. And uh, travel and expenses is interesting because they all wear the same kind of chinos, the men at least, but they have to buy their own chinos. No so way. I oh, yeah. And for women, yeah. they're so ugly. Yes. You don't yeah. want to no. wear them f for no. fun, you know. But, no. you know, uh, anyways, um, without commissaires, we wouldn't have a race. So, Absolutely. Um, one of the many volunteers involved in bike racing. Of course, we've got big organisers where... Uh, people are just paid to organise races. But races like this, it's a volunteer committee of dedicated fans of, of cycling who put a race like this together. So, um, and just like you said, they start planning next week for, yeah. for next, yeah. week, it's, it's for it's next a, year's race. It's a, ro it's a rolling process, essentially. I think that's Eleanor Backstead in the middle there. And the, the light blue of... It's absolutely her. With uh, Ruth Winder on her, on her wheel. I think... Ruth Winder will be who they're going for today. It's, uh, it will be really, really great. Of course, she won the Brabant Sapel, being part of that six-woman breakaway yeah, and yeah. that nail-biting finish. From, a, from a, uh, a British point of view, uh, to see Joss Loudon in that, in that group. That was great. It was absolutely fantastic. And, uh, and to see uh, Drops Lacolle in there. Just bought a pair of Lacolle shorts, but Did they you? arrived before I left home, yeah. So you're riding pink shorts? Uh, no, no, just black, plain oh, black. Oh, the, the brand. Yeah, I the thought brand. the team. Yeah. yeah, well, you can wear pink shorts. I, I, I don't care. I did test some of their shorts for indoor cycling. So they're full of holes. Um, really? Last, yeah, last, last summer. Are they, are they actually full of holes? Yeah, that's a, for ventilation. You Just could like lose mesh, them on the road. I mean, yeah. no, not holes, but mesh. Yeah, but oh, okay. you could use them on the road. But I was particularly impressed with them, so, <laughs> so I decided to buy a... Well, they have um, increased their gap yeah. again, uh, Catherine Hamas and Talita de Jong. Just to remind you, if you're just tuning in, these two riders um, rode away at 91 kilometers from the finish line on the second GPM of the day. Um, Talita Young was the first one on the climb, Catherine Hamas the second one. We actually didn't see how the attack happened, but uh, it might have just been accidental. They taking the points on yeah. the climb and just continuing together. I but I think both of the riders would have loved a few riders more in this breakaway. And that's also the dynamic. You know, if there were five riders, the peloton would not have given no, them more true. rain. Yeah. And it's interesting, actually, that um, Danny Christmas, who was clearly with them over the top of the climb, as we saw, but she didn't go with it. I wonder what happened to, to uh, Danny Christmas there, because she's another gnarly, aggressive rider, like these two women at the front, and it would have been nice to see her um, smashing it on the front again for Drops the Coal, might I say. But, um, that would be really cool. And maybe you can ask her tonight what happened. Oh, I, I may well do that. Remind me, and I'll message her. <laughs> Catherine Hummers. With those, she uh, does push a big gear, doesn't she? She is Hummus, pushing yeah. a big gear yeah. constantly. Yeah. With those huge glasses. Is she it talking seems like to herself there? Or is she no, just she's singing a song. <laughs> I usually sing on the bike. I've, I've never been one for having uh, music in my ears on the bike. I listen uh, to a lot of podcasts on the you? bike, yeah. I, I just want my ears open so I can... Um, I, maybe I'm paranoid and I don't want to get attacked by some savages or something. Uh, but <laughs> alternatively, uh, yeah, <laughs> ma ma <laughs> maybe I, um, maybe I just, I'm outside because I want to, to feel it as much as I can. If you see what well, I mean. Well, I must say I did turn off the music today uh, to enjoy the silence. On the left side of the road, it's uh, Diederikson with Loretta Hansen for Trek Sigafredo. We can see that Majerus is uh, near the front, and she has been near the front almost constantly this race just yeah. to remind you last time we were here 2019 the uh, sprint was won by a small breakaway group uh, Marta Lach the young Polish rider won ahead of Lizzie Banks and Franciska Koch in 2018 uh, we had the same finish here in Steinfurt and the sprint of the peloton was won by Christine Majerus ahead of uh, Alexis Ryan and uh, Eugenie Bouillac and in 2017 again a win for Christine Majerus and uh, she beat uh, Bouillac and Ashley Molman and the last time 
we were actually here was in 2016 when uh, the sprint was won by uh, Lotta Hentela. Um, Lotta de Pisteur back then, but she's married now to uh, Jonas Hentela. Um, Amelie Diederiksen and again Eugenie Bouillac. Mm. So she's been on the podium. She's the queen of this, yeah. Absolutely. I, I noticed that when I was doing my research. But I also noticed looking at the top five from last time we were here Marta Lack, Lizzie Banks, Francisca Koch, Demi Following, Amelia Farlin. Okay. There's only one of those riders you'd let up the road because they have all developed. Koch won a stage at the uh, Balls Ladies, Ladies Tour. Um, at and Marta Lack was up the road, I think, at Flesh Wallon or, or Liege Best. She was in Flesh Wallon, yeah. 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 Uh, but of those, you wouldn't let any of them up the road because they are, they're far, far, far too dangerous. Um, all of them. I was impressed by Cock that day at uh, Bulls Ladies Tour. She, a very clever sprint she put mm. in. She just pipped uh, Majerus, who won the GC there. Fantastic uh, to see that uh, the Bulls Ladies Tour have secured a new yep. sponsor in the uh, company of CIMAC. So from this year, it's going to be the CIMAC Ladies Tour last week of August. And of course, you will be able to watch that live again. It's a World Tour stage race right. and you don't have a lot of those. So don't miss that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully I'll be able to go. I really enjoyed it last time. It, it's, uh, the Netherlands is fantastic. Uh, however, I also really enjoy the Giro Rosa, uh, a nice glass of Chianti. Italy has better food, I should say. Uh, but I we say have better roads. Yes, yeah, I would agree with that. Not quite, uh, the Italian roads are nowhere near as bad as those in South Cambridgeshire. Um, or Glasgow. Or Glasgow, yeah. Sorry, Glasgow people. I love Glasgow, by the way, but uh, the roads were bad. I rode my motorbike through Glasgow a couple of years back. And in, now you saw them. In the, in the rain, I couldn't see anything. <laughs> in the rain it just got dark as I approached <laughs> it could have been Switzerland <laughs> yes yes yeah well these two riders they're still um, 108 absolutely yeah. they still have hope and it it still can happen of course you know um, we have seen that the peloton needs this climb to close about 30 40 seconds um, but it might also be decided that we are going to wait until the final lap to close the gap there have been solo stage and uh, stage wins in the past, of course. Tell me. Not necessarily here. Uh, Cassia Nivia Doma, when she was riding for Rabobank, solo effort and won in Garnish by 46 seconds back in the 16, as I say. Um, and th th there's this other rider, um, uh, Anna, Anna van der Breggen. Yeah. Yeah, she's won so solo <laughs> as well. Well, this used to be a one day race. That's right, yeah. She, uh, Anna van der Breggen won it in um, 14, 2014, and won the, uh, the stage into Garnish solo, and I believe with that won the GC. Trek Sigafredo with uh, practically the entire team there on the left side of the road. Well grouped together, also Movistar at the front. They are probably going to ride for Guadishi in this sprint. That is what I would expect them to do. And still up there, Lea Kirchmann in that green jersey with Corin Rivera. And a little bit back, because she hasn't been dropped, is, of course, uh, still our race leader, Lorena Vibas. And if you're just tuning in, we had quite a horrific crash uh, just over an hour ago with uh, Lorena Vibas going down, um, injuring her elbow, her knee uh, and her shoulder, shoulder um, looking pretty beat up. And, and bloody um, but she manages to hold on we have to see how this is going to result in the bunch sprint of course normally um, or I've been told because I've never crashed on the bike and the day I will crash on the bike will be the last day I will be on a bike um, is that uh, the results are worse tomorrow and not today fueling on adrenaline so yes. it might as well be Lorena Vibas winning this sprint on pure grit yeah I have crashed. Um, uh, yeah, you broke through elbows. I, I, I broke my right elbow on a different occasion to my left elbow, but I did break my right elbow in a race, but then was able to go on a motorcycle trip to the Tour de France the following week. Lucky you. Uh, I had to, just had to get my mate to move my bike around the garages, <coughs> uh, which is just as well because I couldn't touch the ground because my legs are so stumpy. <laughs> I didn't say that. We are on the climb again going towards um, 
Simmerfaden, Simmerschmetz und Simmerfarben. The language here in Luxembourg is um, uh, uh, officially French and Letzebergs. And Letzebergs is a quite a weird mixture of German and French. Yeah. And it's fantastic to listen to. It has a, a really nice cadence to it. And if you've been here more often, like I have for both the men's tour of Luxembourg and the women's tour of Luxembourg, um, you really get to like it. It's... Um, It's, it's a weird little language that people or children learn at school, but they also learn French being... Um, and German, of course. And German, yeah. of course. Um, the country is so incredibly small. And English. So uh, most places I go, I will, I will just try and say hello in the, in the local language. But here, I'm, I, I'm perhaps, perhaps I don't in the Netherlands, actually, because virtually everyone speaks English there. And, um, but uh, here, you can virtually guarantee everyone speaks English. It's, it's true. Um, and it's because this is an international country with um, a quite an international um, population as well. It's actually forbidden to do a count on ethnicity in, Port uh, in, um, in Luxembourg. Is it really? Yeah. In the Netherlands, you, um, for example, you have these, these counts and you have to fill in your ethnicity. So whether your mother and father are born in the Netherlands or in Turkey or Morocco or in the UK or mm. wherever... But in, in, in Luxembourg, that's actually not allowed to um, publish these kind of things. But there's a, quite a big Italian and also Portuguese com um, community, yeah. uh, quite a big Portuguese community mostly here. But there's people working from Belgium, from the Netherlands, from um, Germany, from France, of course, being a landlocked state surrounded by, um, by three countries. Um, it's, it's a hugely, hugely international country. I, I, I did um, read a tweet the other day from the, t the famed cycling journalist uh, Daniel Frieber. Mm. And uh, it <laughs> I only know Daniel. I, it could I be only know him as people, but sort of fan. <laughs> it could could be complete rubbish, but uh, but he said that the uh, Luxembourg has the highest consumption of filled pasta of <laughs> any. <laughs> <laughs> of of, of yeah. any any country in the world it per head of population can't be true. Um, Interesting like to see that according to the GPS the gap is going up again. Yeah, 137 with 28 k's to go. It's now getting quite interesting. Um, but we saw last lap round that they managed to take a lot of time back very, very quickly exactly. indeed. And there are still sufficient riders here to, to do that in this group. Obviously, the smaller the group, the more political it becomes mm -hmm. with the different numbers of different teams. But also, um, uh, there are fewer people to do the chasing. But this is still a big group and, and it will come. Is, You know, so uh, uh, interesting. It's the SD works are all there as well. Um, just the upping of the pace here by Jumbo Visma. Well, last lap on this climb, it was of course Liv Cycling doing uh, most of the work with uh, Sofia Bertizzolo. Um, and it looks like uh, they will be in the mix again with Jumbo Visma. Also, Park Hotel Valkenburg are up there with uh, one of their riders. Um, I'm not sure whether that is Amber van der Hulst or Julia van Bokhoven. Um, we will have to uh, confirm that later. They're now on the steepest part of the climb, and you can see both on the small ring. This is 11%. It doesn't look like it, but it's it's definitely steep. Yeah. Going in towards the corner where the um, official line is for the GPM, but we don't have any points in the last two laps. But 131, interesting. But I think they probably are likely, they, they probably are likely, uh, hedging my bets there, that they will bring this back. Yep. Uh, but it will not be a bunch sprint at the end. What always amazes me is the apparent ease with which top-level professional riders go uphill. Yeah. I, I know it's a kind of stupid thing to say, but... But it is the, the ease with which they go up hills is absolutely <laughs> breathtaking. But this is a much and much more laboured than it was in yes, the previous laps. Definitely. You can see that after being in the lead for, what is it, 65 kilometres already, yeah. um, these two riders are getting uh, tired. And of course, totally natural 
with, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for illustrating that uh, to our viewers, uh, Talita de York. I'd love to know what they just said to each other. I'd love to know what they just said but to each other. after all the mayhem and after all the injuries, it's fantastic to see Talita de Jong smile again and be at the pointy end of a bike race. I put a little video interview with Leah Kirschman out on my Instagram and the link on my Twitter earlier. Well, perhaps I'll try and get Talita de Jong tomorrow morning ask her about the breakaway and, and her form and how it seems to be coming back. But knowing me, of course, I'll forget. No, you won't. I'll send you a message. But uh, yeah, that would, uh, that would be interesting. It'd be, uh, be nice to see uh, for people. I'll be out doing a recon of the lap tomorrow morning, which yep. is only 8.8 kilometres, so I should, yes. be, I should be back in half an hour. Ah. There we oh, are. And we're back. And we're back with you. A bit of a panic moment. I have to com comment over a, uh, over a <laughs> screen like that. Don't care. Don't matter. You just can make up something about yeah. rhubarb <clears throat> to yeah, fill, uh, yeah. fill time. Yeah. Someone has asked on Twitter, actually, for some more um, Facts. rhubarb conversation. Well, I, I'm expecting great things tomorrow about a subject that I have absolutely zero knowledge of. And I didn't expect you to start talking about so um surprise me well let's do luxembourg wine there is wine actually there is wine on the here. moosel on the yeah. moselle river yeah. and um unfortunately we're, we're now in the um west of the country a little bit west of luxembourg the stage tomorrow will be uh, in the same corner of the country uh, because it's actually quite close to the headquarters of the organizers and like things go if you have good relations with the local community with the aldermen, uh, for example, and the council, it makes it much easier to organize a bike race. But they actually only got the definitive okay three weeks ago yeah. to organize this race. This is actually the first race in Luxembourg this year. All the other races have been canceled. Uh, and you have to have the, uh, at least one stage in Garnish. Uh, if you're going to keep calling it's the race uh, uh, Elsie Jacobs. Because? Because she was born and raised there. Exactly. But there's more of Elsie Jacobs tomorrow. Oh, Thank God, more much. rhubarb. Elsie Jacobs, Spuds. of course. Spuds, actually. <laughs> of course, <laughs> being, the first, of being the first world champion. Yes, but when I, when I say spuds, for those of you who aren't quite British. familiar with English uh, slang, it's um, potatoes. Uh, and there is a story of her carrying... 20 kilo sacks of potatoes. On the bike? Uh, no, oh. around working on the family farm prior to going out training. Well, it's, it's absolutely no miracle that these women were so incredibly super strong if they were just full-time working farm girls and That's actually right. having a bike career on the side. And um, I'm looking forward to learning more about Elsie Jacobs tomorrow. We're now at 25 kilometers from the finish line um, of this second day and the first stage because the first day was a prologue won by Lorena Viva. She wears the yellow jersey, the green jersey, the points jersey is of course also owned by Lorena Vivas but worn by her teammate Lea Kirchmann. Then we have a polka dot jersey for the number three in the GC, Caroline Swinkels. She's also in this group and the fourth jersey is the best young rider jersey, um, a white jersey um, as you would expect it and that is worn by Lonneke Uniken, who is fifth in the GC, but also that jersey is owned by Lorena Vibes, who's still so young that she's eligible, eligible for the young rider um, classification because she was born, um, Vibes, in 1999. It's interesting, that quick shot that we had there of the peloton to see that... Um there appears to have been some action there, but um, we're having some difficulties with that uh, moto camera, sadly. Um, so they do, um, it does appear that there's been action, and you'll see that we've not 15 seconds off the, off the leader's advantage just recently. So that something is happening, and yep. we, we're just unable to see it. We just hear on the race radio that the gap is now down to 58 seconds. So uh, there is action going on in the peloton and hopefully we will soon have images from that motorbike again. But for now, we're going to stay with uh, Talita de Jong and um, Katrin Hammers. Just starting to stretch her back off now. Get starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. Talita de Jong, she's uh, 27, uh, born in Berg op Zoom, um, which is in the west of the country, a little bit south 
east of uh, Rotterdam, and she's actually living, still living in the region in Ossedrecht, which is a stone's throw away from the uh, fantastic cyclocross course of Hogerheide. Ah. Um, normally the yeah. uh, last World Cup round before the World Championships, and sadly cancelled, of course, this year uh, in Hogerheide. Um, she started her career with uh, Rabobank all the way back in 2012, stayed with the team until, uh, well, 2017, when um, when it was called uh, Lares Wow Deals. And then, um, yeah, all the uh, mayhem started. She had a last-minute call-up to do uh, Liège uh, last week because uh, Puck Mona wasn't uh, showing up because she had missed her tests prior to um, to the race, making her not eligible to race. So uh, Talita de Jong got a late call-up to make uh, four riders, otherwise the team would not have been yeah. able to start. Um, the young herself was absolutely not amused by this uh, rather unprofessional um, attitude by Puk Mona, who said she just had missed the tests, which is, in these COVID times, an integral part of being a bike racer. Make sure you're tested and eligible to ride. So um, I don't expect Puk Mona to be part of the team next year. Um, judging from the reactions from both Talita de Jong and the team manager, uh, Davy Weinald. So, um, yeah, a, a sad story. Um, but Talita de Jong herself is back to her best way. She, she was uh, third in Omloop van de Westhoek uh, this year, a 13th place in Dwarsdorf Vlaanderen, 21st in Gent Wevelgem, and uh, 16th in Brabantse Paal. That means that you're always there in the final of these big races, and that is something that we haven't seen in a long time. And she's still only 27, yeah. and yeah. her talent will not be gone. And if all the physical um, troubles are now over, Talita Jung has the potential to uh, go back to the absolute top of Dutch pro cycling and therefore global pro women's cycling. But c can the, the rest of the world really be doing with an, another Dutch superstar? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> But the, you, you must remind that most of the Dutch superstars, whether that is Marianne Vos, Anne mm. van der Brege, Chantal van der Broek Blaak, um, Ellen van Dijk, uh, Lucinda Brandt, Annemiek van Vloten, are all well into their 30s. Yes, this is true. Yeah. Um, yeah. The youngest, the young generation is now Lorena Wiebes, uh, Demi Vollering, uh, who, who are both under 25. Um, and just like in other countries, um, it, it's pretty difficult as a young rider coming from the junior ranks to make waves in the pro peloton because the level of the pro peloton goes up and up and up and since there's not a lot of races this year um, most of the races have a top level field making it even harder for these under 23 young riders who were absolute best of the best in the junior ranks to to make waves in the elite ranks and think about the junior riders who are now junior riders in covid times um, getting no racing Getting whatsoever. absolutely no racing, no cyclocross races for, well, basically two consecutive yep. seasons. And, well, if we have racing this summer, they will have some racing. But then you have to go into the elite ranks with zero results to show. The only results that you can show were a, as an under-17 rider. And, you know, there you have the factor of some girls growing faster than others in, in strength and in height. It's 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 going to be but more it, more and more difficult, and that's why it's great that there's now teams investing in in young riders in development and yeah. even an under twenty three team. And it's not just physical development; it, 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 it's your skills and your experience that helps you put your physicality into the right context within a race. And without that experience, you, 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 those people that can just be in the right place at the right time because they know what to do and because of their physicality are, are very few and far between without experience. And some people learn quicker than others, of course, but, but there aren't many of them. And, and there will be a bit of a sort of black hole, really, um, of juniors of both genders. Exactly. And uh, male juniors, they have, of course, the opportunity to go and show themselves four years yeah. more or five years more in yeah, the under-23 under ranks. That's fine. Um, but teams will have to invest. And another factor is um, minimum pay is fantastic. 
But if you are short on cash, like most women's teams are, will you invest your 20 or 30,000 euro minimum pay in a rider who will guarantee you success or in a rider who is a developing rider who might have success in two years or three years? You know, um, that's a gamble and that's a downside of imposing a minimum wage um, for teams as well. Going into the finish line, have you said your alarm? Yes, you have. Uh, latest gap on the blackboard was 48 seconds. Going into the last lap, you can see that these two riders are now getting seriously tired after being in the lead for 71 kilometers already. That's a hell of a breakaway, isn't it? It's a fantastic effort from the But when you said, have I set my alarm, I wonder what you're talking about. I mean, it's not boring. I haven't been asleep, have I? <laughs> but... Um, yeah, it's... Um, here we go, Chabé on the front there. And just little splits starting to come in the peloton. It's still a peloton, though. It's not a, a reduced group. There is still a sizable number of riders there. You know, 50, 60 women all between there. Lea Thomas getting on the radio, just checking in back to the team car or to her teammates further back in the, in the bunch. Last rider in the bunch is uh, Ella Harris. And the gap is about 28 seconds. Um, it says 17 on the uh, on the screen there, but I timed that at, at uh, about 28. Over Struggling the line. to uh, <coughs> get back to their peloton is a New Zealand rider Georgia Danford. She's just off the back of that group, but this is uh, the group where it's all going to happen. Yeah. The rest of the uh, peloton is not even in sight here at the finish line. So uh, this is where it's all going to happen. Last bottles in the feed zone. Most riders not interested. Little gap there came off the front. Who's who's the Canyon SRAM rider? Is it, uh, is it Michaela Harvey? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, a group now crossing the finish line with, uh, amongst others, uh, Eleanor Baxted. Um, they're about one and a half minute behind the peloton, led by Natalie van Gogh. Michaela Harvey, is that Barbara Goriski just mm -hmm. looking over her shoulder there? Looking out for Emma Norsgaard, of course. I did take a rather good photo of Barbara Goriski at the prologue of the Ladies' Tour of, Nor Tour of Norway a few years back. If I remember, I'll stick it on my Twitter later on. She's looking straight down the lens of my camera as she mm -hmm. goes past. <laughs> Lucky shot. All skill, please. Of All course. Skill. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> ah. Drinking bottles, shifting gears. Uh, Katrin Hammers all does it at the same time. Someone's just tweeted uh, Liam, who, who extended my apologies about uh, Keith Lee being in uh, the wrong part of West Yorkshire, has just tweeted the infamous tale of the licorice all sorts uh, uh, involving Beryl Burton as she overtook in uh, a national level, I think it was 20 or 50 mile time trial. Wow, 25, that's, that's quite a time yeah. trial. She overtook, I think, the second best man in the country who, who, who'd started a minute ahead of her and uh, as she passed her eyes she said keep up lad and gave him a sweet and then, <laughs> and then dropped him it's just fantastic there's a measure of the woman is humour but her phenomenal strength she really was one of the best ever there is some um, wind picking up here at the finish line as well little crosswind in at least more than it was uh, earlier this morning and earlier in the race. The race started 2.30 European time and, uh, well, we're already uh, almost four hours, three hours, three hours, sorry, three hours on our way um, in the longest stage ever in the Seratisid Festival, Elsie Jacobs, a three-day stage race in the lovely country of Luxembourg and well we have many fantastic rides uh, f many fantastic races uh, for women now with um, many races having a, a, a women's equivalent now but uh, the one thing that we're lacking is stage racing and um, women's tour unfortunately postponed normally that would take place in June and I think the next big stage race is going to be Turingen. 
yes, uh, at the end of May. Um, but June is just completely empty. Um, yeah. I've heard a rumour that the British Nationals has been um, postponed as well. Um, and, and, and if that's at the same time as some of the World Tour racing that Alice Barnes might be doing, then perhaps Alice will be three years as the, uh, <laughs> as the time trial and road race of champion of, the, uh, of Britain. Attack here by uh, Ale Betesi Ljubljana. Team only started with four riders. Uh, originally, they had Marlen Reusser and Sophie Wright on the start uh, list, but um, well, they uh, couldn't be, um, they couldn't make it to Luxembourg due to uh, different reasons. But four riders is the absolute minimum to start, and they had four with uh, Jursina, the Russian rider, and three riders from Italy with uh, Tomasi Patuelli and, of course, uh, Tatiana Guderzo, the former world champion. Again, a little lull in the action there. Rihanna Marcus is at the front with uh, the aero helmet, the only one of her team with an aero helmet in the uh, polka dot jersey, also of Jumbo Visma, Caroline Swinkels. There is Emma Norsgaard on the right side of the road. Hand hand up there, and we can just hear it on um, on race radio from someone from the Valcar Travel and Service team. And if you look at the front, there's another Valcar rider, and that's uh, Chiara Consoni. Uh, so I would suggest that her being so near the front mm -hmm. now would be that they'll go for Balsamo in the sprint. And and Balsamo is that certainly has the quality to win this stage. Oh, absolutely. Um, and Next. as I said earlier, I'm not sure Consoni does. I think she's more a, a, a flatter road sprinter than than the you know eight percentish that we mm. incline that we have here in the last th three four hundred meters. I noticed earlier that Hamas is just starting to look tired yeah, now, she's and, cracking. and De Jong has been stretching and all a sign that they're just getting a little bit tired and De Jong who's been spinning her cadence quite fast has now slowed down it's just it, just about strength and and just trying to keep the pedals turning I also noticed how Hamas who went up the the climb to the finish line mm -hmm. in the big ring a couple of laps Oof, back but not anymore was in the little ring <laughs> yeah. on the, still on the flat she switched a little, uh, um, little correction by my um, Spanish colleague, uh, São Miguel. Um, of course, Burgos is the next World Tour stage race. Of course, and yeah. it will yeah. have an amazing uphill, up mountain finish in uh, Lagunas de Neia. So uh, that is absolutely something to look forward to. Um, Burgos, uh, luckily, was um, kept on the calendar uh, in, in, in Spain and... Uh, that is going to give us some amazing racing because Burgos is uh, a stunning place. I've been to Bira, in Makamin Bira, uh, a couple of times into the Basque Country, which is just slightly further uh, that north. Further north, yeah, that area where that race is is just slightly further north. But uh, Burgos is, um, other than the fact that there's red wine there, mm. it is not an area I know anything about. Well, Maybe you can learn something start, about it yeah, and then start researching. Uh, start researching. <laughs> it is the place where the uh, uh, Vuelta España for men is going to start, actually inside the world famous uh, That's right. Burgos Cathedral. Yeah. Back to the racing here in Luxembourg with uh, Talita de Jong with the white helmet leading this uh, breakaway of two that started 91 kilometers from the finish line. So that is uh, 76 kilometers ago, almost two hours in the lead already for Katrin Hamas and Talita de Jong. Their gap um, was a maximum of two and a half minutes and then it was brought back to 30 seconds, went out to one and a half minutes again and now we can see that the gap is opening up again because the Commissaire's car has yeah. uh, rejoined them. So the peloton will have to <coughs> make up their mind. We know that on the Sima Farm climb, um, the peloton can make up uh, 40 seconds easily. And this, Owen, is a very interesting development. Yeah, yeah th this answers a question for us. The, the, the embattled race leader, Lorena Vibis, is now on the front with the blood dripping down her legs, her shoulders exposed through her ripped jersey from that horrendous crash. And then third wheel, wearing the green jersey there, is Leah Kirschman, who started the day three seconds back uh, on GC, and they will be sprinting for her. She told me before the race that, um, that she, she likes an uphill sprint, she said, um, and she's going to have to like this one uh, as well. It's, uh, it's 
this is going to be a, a, an interesting finish, an interesting sprint to see who's going to come out on top in the yellow jersey. Uh, we have bonus seconds on the line, 10, 6 and 4 seconds. So if Lea Kirchmann actually wins the, the stage, she is going to overtake uh, Lorena Vibes and take that yellow jersey. A very late gel there for the Canadian rider to uh, get some extra energy. Of course, 14 kilometers means that you can still use those sugars. I hope she put it back in her pocket because I think so, yeah. if the jury sees that, you might just get a big fine or if it happens more than once, you get disqualified due to the uh, new rules. Kirchmann is uh, a rider who actually targeted this race. She said, this is one of the uh, focus points of my season, she said on the Team DSM website. And uh, well, she looks very focused indeed. Corin Rivera, Just small and fast, out. coming to the front, helping yeah. out yeah. with uh, the chasing, because, uh, well, the gap is going up to 44 seconds again. It's interesting to see the communication there between her and the uh, Yumba Visma rider, uh, Romy Kasper, just talking to her. And you can, Kirschman is constantly speaking to Juliette Labousse there, uh, who is the second wheel. And Vibis is absolutely burying herself. We've got a gap of 44, so 43 seconds now, but it is coming down, I would imagine, with um, Vibis putting, putting everything into this. I would not expect Rebus to be able to finish with this group once nope. she's put this effort in. Uh, and you have Loretta Hansen just moving up as well, just coming up to the front to give her a hand. Yumbo Visma are also obviously um, in the mood for giving, giving um, them a hand at the front. Bear in mind, uh, Caroline Swinkles, she finished three seconds down uh, on GC. There were no bonus seconds awarded yesterday. so. You know, as yesterday's results were, is has that how they stand. So uh, Vibis at uh, um, was the leader with Kirschman and Spinkles three seconds down. Talita De Jong at five seconds. Unikan five. Anushka Costa, who could be Yumbo Visma's um, Ace. opt, yeah, at five. Winder and Majerus at six seconds, Rihanna Marcus at seven, and Emma Norsgaard at seven also. Of those, mm, interesting. It'd be an interesting uphill sprint, this, uh, to see who uh, who's going to take it, because there are some big candidates. We have Norsgaard some... taking a bit of air there. She doesn't want to be there. She wants to be on a teammate's wheel, but I can't see any teammates in there, whereas there are plenty, plenty of Trek Segafredo. We're back in uh, Septfontaine, translates as uh, seven fountains at the construction site. And then the, the climb to uh, Simmel's farm is going to start. And that is probably going to be the place where these two riders are going to be caught. Because, uh, well, the last time we went up there, the uh, peloton closed uh, half a minute with ease. Well, it's probably hurting a lot, but uh, it looked easy. On the left side of the road, it's the Volcar girls. There's still uh, three of them with uh, Consoni and Balsamo and uh, Romy Casper leading the peloton at the moment, followed by Loretta Hansen for the Trek Segafredo team. Fantastic job done by uh, Lorena Vives. And there she goes off the back. Um, as a true leader, you also have to be honest with your teammates and saying, it's not going to happen yeah. today for me. I'm in too much pain. Leia, take it away. And what she did there, uh, leading that peloton, showed true uh, team member to teammate. It showed yeah. Tree, it, team spirit. Team spirit. Yeah. Thank you very much. It smells by, like uh, smells like team spirit. I did have, have Nirvana on the on the uh, player <laughs> today, by the way. But it was come as you are. But Lorena Vibes is going off the back there, and you were right in your. Uh, presumption that she is uh, not going to finish with this group. And the but pink powerhouse just coming to the front there, the three of uh, Valcar Travel and Service, they've joined in. They've the, all, all three women have just come through on the side of the road and they've put themselves in a position now where they can actually utilize their, um, their lead out. So we've got a number of teams, but they all seem to be working together to, to position their leader in the right place for the end. And is that Costa just, yeah, Costa, I think just coming up on there. Just see a... Yep. Yep. Interesting enough, the uh, helmet, the uh, specialized helmet there of Christine Majerus in the colors of the national flag, red, white, and blue. She hasn't done one meter at the front no. of the bunch, but she's always there in 10th position, 15th position. And mind you, she's won this sprint on this exact same 
uh, Rude Hobscheid uh, twice before. So uh, she's absolutely one of the riders to look out for. Unfortunately, no spectators allowed, but there are a few people Just lining the road up. here, yeah. riding <laughs> up to a cheer. Oh, Vibas is coming back to the front to try <laughs> and give uh, a little bit extra energy to uh, bring back uh, Talita de Jong and Katrin Hammers through, through team spirit there. That she is just this such, is amazing. Such a hard, tough woman. That that's really good. Twenty nine seconds. The gap now. We're hearing on race radio. Chiara Consoni, I think, is second wheel. I think that's Consoni there. Just second wheel. You've got Lisa yep. Balsamo is the third in that pink train of Valcar Travel and Service. She has the, uh, different glasses now. She's wearing Co. for the first time. Norsgaard, the. Danish champion yeah. looking very solid there, just ahead of Leah Kirchmann. But we're Taking going to the climb, and is there a rider who has different plans to try and avoid a bunch print? If I look, for example, at the Canyon Shram riders, they will have to attack yeah. somebody like uh, um, um, Fisher Black. She will have to to try to attack Harvey. Harvey sorry, yeah. yeah. I always get them. They, they look Mikola relatively Harvey, similar. And they're the both same New, New Zealand, Zealanders. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I remember talking rugby with um, M M uh, Michaela Harvey. I don't think rugby is the designated sport for Michaela Harvey, judging uh, by no, her size. No, but it is the designated sport of her country. I had a fantastic chat with Jay Fine the other day. And he said, well, I tried rugby, but judging from my size, it wasn't my best yeah. bet of actually winning something in sports, which is true. So that was a fun, fun quote. Lovely, lovely guy, Jay Vine. My, my broken right ear is all to do with rugby. Oh, God. Um, and my broken jaw was to do with rugby. <laughs> we don't do rugby. And both broken thumbs. I think we do do rugby for women. Though, right, but there anyway. she goes. Vibis is now done. To Well, to the heads off to Lorena Vibis. Yeah. Great work with uh, Harvey coming to the front there. And uh, still Volcar. It's very early for the Volcar riders to uh, to take yeah, the lead here, is. but yeah. they still have to close that 30 second gap. Yeah, but we're now them. all in the same frame. That that's not 30 seconds. Uh, nope. Lorena Ibis is dropped, according to Race Radio. Uh, who would you? Ha I mean, if we were going to have to vote for a, a, a winner, uh, no, for most combative, who would you say? I would say. Uh, Talita the Young or Katrin Hammers. Yeah, I would say Hammers because she, she competed for the first QM, yep. but it's so close between the two of them. Um, uh, don't we have a tradition of uh, um, nominating who we think is going to win? Yeah, but usually you do that a little bit earlier. But I'm just um, I'm just going for the uh, patriotic choice here with uh, Majerus. Yeah. Well, I'll go with Kirschman then. Well, Eight. we have one more kilometre of this climb to go. And then uh, on the top, a very fast descent where we had that crash with Lorena Vibas um, many, many laps ago. And how tough for her to stay with the race. It's just, she's deserved of all the plaudits that she gets. Peloton there with uh, Royakus all the way at the back for the Live Cycling Team. And uh, the Commissaire President is not particularly happy with the motorbike being there. And on the top of the climb, there is no cell reception show. We will have to wait until the images come back and uh, they will be back in a few seconds. So uh, don't worry, it's just that this uh, camera crew works on a 4G network, which is absolutely amazing in, uh, in Luxembourg, but just not in the final 300 meters of that climb. It's true. No, and, and we've avoided it every other lap, of course, because we... we had somebody to break away. Exactly. And so uh, our um, excellent producer next door has been able to uh, switch between, but uh, it's not possible at the moment, sadly. And Hamas will try and stay away yeah. just a little bit longer as we uh, are back online with you for the final seven and a half kilometers of this uh, fantastic stage, 125k today from uh, Steinfurt to Steinfurt. And we're on our way back to Steinfurt, 91 kilometers from the finish line. We had two riders attacking on the GPM on the Queen of the Mountain sprint with uh, Katrin Hammers, the rider here of uh, Siratisi WNT <coughs> and Talita de Jong of the Bingle Casino Chivalmera team. 
They had a maximum lead of just under three minutes, but now on the final climb of Simulfarm, they are about to get caught with uh, Katrin Hammers trying to oh, evade. And there's go. a counter-attack happening with uh, Harvey and, of course, Ruth Winder. And Leia, Leia Thomas just trying to close the gap. Rihanna Marcus there, Elise Chabé behind, Costa. and uh, uh, Majus is also there. Hamas is just, just blown herself to absolute smithereens now. This is a huge effort there from Ruth Winder. Oh, this is the, a great development. Hamas is still in that group. Harvey is the final rider there. Shabby, another rider from Canyon Shram. Two riders from Jumbo Visma with Anuska Costa and Rihanna There's Marcus. Of course, Majerus is there. Fisher and Ruth Winder, Ruth Winder is leading this group, the American national champion with Leah Thomas, her compatriot. But she needs she needs someone to come through. If, you know, if you've got seven different teams there, you've got two Two Jumbo Vismas, someone's got to make a move, go to the front there, either Marcus or um, Costa now has there got to take responsibility Kiefman because here comes Gershman co coming across, yeah. Fisher Black to the front. We can see Karlene Svenkels there in the polka the jersey trying to bridge across, same goes for Lonica Unica there in the white jersey but now the race is fully on with uh, some very interesting riders in this first group and this is looking very promising for Christine Majerus and also for your bed, Leia Kirchman. Yeah. Fisher Black is now going to bury herself to keep that group away now to uh, to work for Majerus. There, who can I see? Rihanna Marcus, Elise Chabé, uh, uh, Juliette Labousse is still there, as you Balsamo. would expect. Balsamo, Emma uh, Norsgaard. Is that Gudetso? Don't think it is Gudetso. No, no, it's not Gudetso. We don't have the rainbow stripes. Trying to bridge across to uh, Caroline Swinkles and one of the riders of SD Works. SD Works, yeah. And that SD Works rider I expect to come straight to the front and start working. I think it's Anna Shackley. Well, all the big teams are here, Owen, for the final. But after this climb, it looks like a large group will be able to return. So we have to wait for that little kicker at 3K to go. Yeah, it is Anna Shackley. Just just got on the back. She's just taking a, a moment to recover. And then she's going to have to make a, a get to the front. An attack there from Ale BTC Ljubljana. Can't quite see who that is. She's the only rider of her team in this first group, but it's quickly closed down by SD Works, who, of course, as always, have a strength in numbers. But they'll want to keep this group away. They will desperately want this to be the finishing group. Leah Thomas is looking great, but of course she has Emma Norsgaard on her wheel trying to uh, go for this race. Shanna Cordova, one of the riders there, yeah. also uh, Bertit Solo for the uh, Live Racing team. A little bit of communication there by Kalen Swinkels, but uh, the other group is coming back with uh, more firepower with Lonica Uniken leading that group there in that white jersey of best young rider. And also still in that group is Talita de Jong. Oh, attack. Another attack here by uh, Valerie. Is it? Valerie Demay, sorry. Valerie Demay and Lonica Unica in that white jersey trying to bridge across as Yad Viel, the rider from France, the former national champion of the country. But she has trouble bridging across and on her wheel is Anuska Koster. Uh, Unican, I mean, if, if these two stayed away, Unican would be good for this. Um, she's a good sprinter, but this is going to come back again. But it's really stretched out back there. Really stretched. Well, one long line as they're coming back into town. A desperate flick of the elbow there by Yad Viel of the FDG team, asking uh, Anuska Kostu to take over. Katrin Hammers is still there. <laughs> that is great. She's still in this group with uh, Consoni as well. Great final. Lonica Unica is sitting on the wheel of the Live Racing rider. And there's a little, just that little group, and it looks like the Movistar rider leading that chasing peloton isn't, is just struggling to close that gap. Lea Kirschman sat on second wheel there. You've got a Canyon Sram rider trying to bridge the gap as well. I think that might be Michaela Harvey. Of course, Lea Kirschman, Kirschman that has to depend on yeah. other riders. She has no teammates in this group as far as I can see. Of course, Lorena Vibas did fantastic work, but it looks like Lea Kirchmann is now on her own and has to depend on other riders and other teams. Nope, Corinne Rivera is still there, by the way. Yeah, I'd be For surprised if Le Boost wasn't there as well. 
We'll have to uh, wait and see. Looks like uh, Michel Bredewold there for the Park Hotel Valkenburg team. And uh, super tiny SD Works riders. <laughs> Anna Shackley is there, just on the right-hand side behind the Liv Racing. Leading the peloton. Oh, a big crash, crash there, there happening. Crash happening. Oh, this is... Uh, One of the World well, yeah. Cycling Centre riders. It must be uh, Medvedova, who was the best rider of that team. But uh, hopefully she can get up uh, pretty soon. Rihanna Marcus now leading uh, the peloton together with Taylor Wiles. And still there is uh, Katrin Hammers with her teammates. Majerus at the front for the first time, going into that final three kilometer kicker. This is the street up to the kennels, the dog kennels. Um, it's about 8% these uh, 300 meters, and this is the place where you can actually launch an attack. Marcus. If you're, for example, Rihanna Marcus. Juliette Labousse is there. Look, she's right on the wall, just, just getting on the wheel now. This is the place where you want to try it. I think that's Clara Coponi yeah, yeah. of uh, FDG, trying to follow also Taylor Wiles and Leah Kirchmann. Uh, Balsamo there is the Valcar Travelling Service rider. Look at the strength in numbers there by Jumbo Visma. Balsamo is uh, her mouth wide open, trying to get as much air as she can with this attack by Rihanna Marcus and Labus. They have a small gap. Anushka Costa is trying to bridge across. Of course, they don't have a super fast sprinter in the Jumbo Visma team. They try to make this a really hard race straight from the start, and they're doing that on the final climb until the finish line, which is also a climb. Interesting move there from Costa. Why is she trying to close the gap when her own teammate is up the road? I don't, I don't understand that. I mean, Marcus versus, oh, here we go. That's why. <laughs> Marcus versus Labousse would be a good sprint. Anuska Costa and Juliette Labousse now with a lot of Jumbo Visma riders. Harvey is oh. leading there with Chabet, with Majurus. And uh, well, this is the final place where you can actually yeah. throw your stuff away until the final of the race. Norsgaard is still there. Kirchmann is looking very solid in that green jersey. Following attack here by Elise Chabit. I'll tell you who else looks really good. In control is uh, Christine Majerus. Absolutely. The, there she goes there. She's just closing the gap there. She hasn't got any teammates in front of her, but it's just eased off now. So she's got an easier job to, to close that gap with uh, Taylor Wales on her wheel. Uh, Juliette Labousse is back there. Leah Thomas is back there. And you've got the pair from Valcar, Michaela Harvey in the um, in the cosmic jersey there of uh, Canyon Sram. <laughs> well, we are heading towards the finish line with this group. It's going to be a bunch of Nobody managed to stay away, although Taylor Wiles is going to try again to uh, stay clear. But uh, the peloton with the Guarishi there and also Rihanna Marcus will stay on her wheel. Fantastic riding here in the final of the Seratistit Festival, Elsie Jacobs. But we are going towards that inevitable bunch sprint that we've seen yeah. so far here in Steinfurt. Is that Demay again? It's Valerie Demay yeah. of the Live Cycling Team, followed by Xabi and Anuska Costa. Bosomo is screaming something at Lea Kirchmann. It looks like the teammates of Balsamo are gone, so her lead out with Chiara Consoni and also um, uh, uh, Sanguinetti, they're not there anymore, so uh, Balsamo has to do it on her own. No, nope, there got is one back. Teammate, yeah. There is his back, Consoni's back. And the race there, the second group there, led by Park Hotel Valkenburg, are trying their darndest to get back, and they will get back to that first group. Leia Thomas um, leading for Guariski there think in the Movistar jersey. Corinne yeah. Rivera there on her wheel is Majerus is still there. Uh, Ruth Winder. Fantastic, Chabet. fantastic racing going into that final kilometre and we have to pay attention towards that final turn going into the Rue de Hopscheid, the uh, finish street here. This is a last penultimate turn and this is going to be the last turn. Luckily, everybody seems to stay upright, look towards the end of the peloton. And this is very important for Emma Norsgaard. She still has two riders in front of her on this climb. She's there in fourth position with Majerus on her wheel. Fantastic teamwork here by Team Movistar. But will they be able to get rid of Christine Majerus? Ja de Vier trying to get to the front there for FDG. Now is that final turn coming up. 
Balsamo trying to get to the front there with help of Chiara Consoni in that fantastic pink jersey of Volcar. Also, uh, looks like Shana Cordova is going to do the sprint for Live Racing. Can't really see properly. Yeah, there she is. And this is the sprint towards the finish line. It's going to be very exciting between Norsgaard, between uh, uh, Majirus, and where is Lea Kirchman? Where is the green jersey? She seems to be a little bit far back to actually go for that bonus seconds. Fantastic work so far by Team Movistar, but Emma Norskat should not sprint too early to uh, go for her actually first win of the season. Well, this is looking incredibly powerful. She's not leaving anything to chance today, Emma Norskat, to actually win the race. Emma Norskat is going for it, and finally the day is here that she is in first place. Bravo, Emma Norskat. And uh, we saw Lea Kirchmann in third place, meaning that she is the new leader in the race, picking up four bonus seconds. But this was absolutely spectacular teamwork by Team Movistar. Fantastic, fantastic work. And Emma Norsgaard has that win. And it's uh, a double victory for the team today because they also won the stage in Asturias with... Um, uh, Hector Carretero, so uh, fantastic day for Team Movistar, but even more so for this fantastic young rider, Emma Norsgaard Jürgensen. Thanks to great work by uh, her team. Yeah, she took a real she took a real risk there, going so early, and I thought Majerus was right on her wheel and was going to be able to come past her, but um, no, no, she just opened <laughs> the gap and she kept it going. She, that was an incredible, incredible <laughs> sprint there. And, uh, she, you know, she started the day only um, seven seconds down. Ooh, so that's she one should... second. One se it depends on whether the jury is going to give that gap. Yes. It depends yeah. on whether they're going to give that gap. Because there is a gap. There is a gap. Um, Kirchmann is in fourth, uh, third place, so she is picking up those four seconds, meaning um, that she would take yellow if the jury is giving a, is not giving a gap. They should give a gap, and that means that Norsgaard might be the yellow jersey. Spectacular win. <laughs> Hugs all around there by uh, Team Movistar with uh, 36 is Leah Thomas. And if we look at the results of uh, Emma Norsgaard this year, well, we've already memorized that it's a lot and a lot of second yeah. places for the d young uh, Danish rider. Um, to memorize, there was a second place in Omlop Newsblad, second place in Le Samin, second and third places in Healthy Aging Tour, second place in Bruges de Panne, uh, second place in Schelderprijs, and today, finally, this is her first win of the season. Great, great work by Emma Norsgaard. Well, more than that, it was a great work from the team. Uh, they they came to the front there with uh, Ode uh, Bianica, I think it was, and uh, Leah Thomas, and they put her in the best possible position coming into that final tight right-hand turn. And she was just able to, you know, to sit out of the wind until she, yeah. it was time to open her sprint. You could actually spring. see her biding her time. Yeah, yeah. It was a, a really, really good sprint there from uh, the young Danish rider. Great picture here with uh, Udby Anik, with Emma Norsgaard and Leah Thomas, the three riders, um, well, making sure that Emma Norsgaard left nothing to chance to win her first race of the season. Fantastic win, 21 years of age only is she, Emma Norsgaard, lives in Girona together with her fiancé, Mikkel Bjerg, the rider of the uh, team UAE Emirates, and her brother, lives in the same house, uh, Matthias Norsgaard, also on uh, Team Movistar. But this is a wonderful moment for her. And we don't have the, re the, the full confirmed results at the moment, folks, so we're not able to give you the... Um... That was fantastic. I love that. We're just, um, we're just going to wait for the top five go. of the jury. Do we have a top five? No. Um, of course, it was uh, Emma Norsgaard winning the race ahead of Convalonieri. That was uh, the rider there for Serati uh, CWNT. And um, in third place, we saw Lea Kirchmann. Now we have to see what the jury decides with regards to that gap. Are they going to give it or are they not going to give it? I think she's got it by one second. Having started the, the day four seconds behind Kirschman, 
You said oh, seven. No. no, Kirschman was second on... Um, let me see. The, the difference between Kirchmann and uh, Emma Norsgaard was, was four seconds. Yeah. That means that she has it. Yeah. I thought you said it was seven, but that was a misunderstanding. That means that she has the yellow jersey yeah. as well. And you can see her riding off there to, to the podium, towards us. Towards the podium. That is normally a stage for musical performances. Yep. I didn't know that. Or the mayor addressing people or something. No, this is uh, most clearly a fantastic double win for Emma Norsgaard yeah. in, uh, in Steinfurt. Let's see that again with, uh, well, I must say, superior work by the entire Movistar team, but uh, especially by uh, Bianic and Leah Thomas. Convalonieri tried, and she was uh, secure enough to celebrate. She did look over her shoulder, just to be sure, to avoid uh, a Demi Vollering, Ruth Winder kind of moment. Fourth yeah. place goes to Xavi, fifth to uh, La Bousse, I think, yeah. and sixth to Christine Majurus. And there, across the finish line, was Lorena Bibus, not even that far behind. Yeah, so she should have um, yellow by six, by six seconds, by my um, relatively poor calculations. Kirschman heading off to the podium there as well. But a, a fabulous performance from Movistar. They came to the front when they needed to. That was a, a, an impressive performance. And, yeah, um, Christine Major is just slightly going down uh, backwards in that sprint there. She has been ill off uh, off the back of her um, spring classic season. She told me this morning she took some time off and then she got back on the bike and got ill. So her pre pre preparation for the home race hasn't been perfect. Well, this is an actual uh, description on how Team Movistar works, bringing everybody to a better level. Yeah. Um, not only the big stars, Annemiek van Floten, but also, um, of course, Bianik and Leah Thomas had a, a super level already. But this team is um, will also take the younger, um, relatively more inexperienced the Spanish riders to a better level. Absolutely, and that's part... And we're going to see the uh, sprint again because it was absolutely phenomenal. So I would like to see uh, that final again. Let's show the final of the race again. Roll the tape. <laughs> going into that uh, moment where Katrin Hammers and uh, Talita de Jong are caught with this fantastic work by Lorena Vibus, uh, acknowledging that after that crash, she is not going to be able to contest the sprint and is going to do the work for Lea Kirchmann in that green jersey. Well, hats off to her, to uh, the fighting and team spirit of Lorena Vibus. These two riders, they attacked actually at 91 kilometers from the finish line and stayed clear until seven kilometers from the line. But on the top of the Simmers farm, the climb there, it was uh, over and out for Kathleen Hummers and Talita de Jong. And we had an attack by Ruth Winder. Winder, the American national champion of the Trek Sega Fredo team, was uh, the one who ignited the flame. And there we had a crash of one of the uh, World Cycling Center riders coming into the town of Steinfurt with um, a relatively big group still. Elise Chabet with uh, Lea Kirchmann, Anushka Koster, Majerus, Taylor Wiles, Rianne Marcus, all there at the front. And this is going into that final, launched by Ud Bianic and Lea Thomas. And after a million of second places this year, it's finally the top step for Emma Norsgaard in the second day, uh, yeah, on the second day and in the first stage of the Seratisit Festival. Elsie Jacobs, and like I said earlier today in commentary, I think there will be a lot of cheers among us women cycling fans that she finally pulled it off. Not only that, but there'll be a lot more to come. It's a question of confidence, and uh, with one win under her belt, she will understand 
how she did it and she will gain confidence <laughs> and there, there is more from her without any doubt for me. I love this. And she At also... At last, uh, she's saying. <laughs> yeah, just like Lorena Wiebes in Schelde Prijs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she also takes that yellow jersey, of course, um, here in Steinfurt. Tomorrow, Owen, we have already the final stage. But uh, we will be live at 2.30 European time. I believe it is, yes. Uh, yes, for a stage of 105 kilometers. But it's by no means easier because that local lap in Garnich might only be 8.8 .8 kilometers. Uh, we're going to do it five times and there is some serious climbing in that local lap. Yeah, there's a, after the finish line, there's a, a, a bit of a dig to get over the top and then there's a proper climb. Uh, I say a proper climb, a proper climb. It's not, it's not alpine. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not more fun too. <laughs> but uh, there's a, a decent little dig um, on, the, on the back half of the lap. And so it's going to... And it comes round every eight kilometres. You know, it, if it were once, it would mean very little. But it comes round every eight kilometres. And teams will be looking to attack and use that as ascent in order to gain an advantage. You'll have... Uh, Movistar may take it up, may use it to their advantage. But, of course, you other teams who want to take the win and to beat uh, Movistar, they will be using those climbs to, their, uh, to help them... Uh, get their rider over the line first, which is obviously what it's all about. But um, yeah, a garnish where we start and finish tomorrow is the, the, the birthplace of uh, Elsie Jacobs. So um, we'll talk a bit about her there. But it's, it's actually in the bottom left-hand corner, if you like, of, um, of uh, Luxembourg, right close to the Belgian and French border. You could just see there the last two riders coming over. But here we've got the... Um, a replay of the sprint again and final she, rider has crossed the line yeah, just ahead of the broom wagon but here we see Norsgaard again <laughs> and she knows she knows 15 meters out at last I've got it Confalonieri who's done well on this um, finish before and she cursing herself for not quite getting there you know what I've done uh, several times now in race organizers telling them to change Jorgensen on the start sheet into Norsgaard yes because nobody knows who Emma Jorgensen is no um, <laughs> the funny thing at the Movistar men team they actually have Matteo Jorgensen which who is an American rider and then they have That's Matthias Norsgaard Jorgensen who then all yeah. of a sudden becomes Matthias Jorgensen and nobody knows who it is yeah. so I always say okay could you do please do me one that, favor change it to Emma Norsgaard because That's what their names are on their race <laughs> licenses. That's what they're registered with the, the UCI with. Okay, well, this was it today from Steinfurt. We saw the first season victory of Emma Norska, but probably not the last one because this was absolutely spectacular. Um, on behalf of Owen Rogers and myself, Jose Bain, thank you very much for watching. You can find us tomorrow on the same channel you're watching right now for the second and last stage with... Um, a start and finish in Garnich and uh, quite some meters of elevation on the way. So don't miss that tomorrow, 2.30 uh, Central European time, so 1.30 British Standard Time. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.